It has been entirely too long since we've heard that theme on this channel. What is going on, everybody? Welcome, Arvanauts, to a Saturday stream. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to day 24 of Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks, Shadows, and Twilight. We are sponsored, as always, by Alligator Alley Entertainment. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you folks are as pumped up as I am for tonight's session. It is going to be a great one. Before we get any further, just a couple of reminders about ways to support us on the channel. If you haven't done so already, please follow the channel. Please check out our YouTube with exclamation point arv2. Discord is exclamation point arv cord. Twitter is exclamation point arv tweets. Website arvanelleron.com. Financially, uh, exclamation, oh, and also exclamation point arv sky for the blue sky as well. Exclamation point arv shop is the merchandise area where you can get stuff, uh, swag relating to many of the campaigns in this channel, including coming soon, TM, uh, swag relating to this particular campaign too. So you'll want to check in on that. Uh, exclamation point arv treon is the Patreon. Really trying to build that number up into triple digits again that is kind of the financial backbone of the channel and it really does make a difference if you were able to support us over there um, and you can get some amazing stuff for yourself including inspirations to help our players so please, con please consider joining us over there please also consider subbing to us on our channel uh, here on Twitch because that gives you those custom sub badges and emotes to use here there and everywhere across Twitch and also gives you those custom sub badges uh, and things uh, sorry it gives you the inspirations is what I was going to say as well uh, to support the various players uh, uh, exclamation point Icarus is my graphic novel from Athos Arts. Exclamation point Library is my Tales and Tomes, the Forbidden Library. That's my 5e adventure and source book from Alligator Alley Entertainment, which is also the sponsor of this campaign. And speaking of Alligator Alley, if you type in exclamation point Grayshade, not only can you currently get the Grayshade and Renegade books from Athos Arts, um, part the first two parts of my Grey Assassin trilogy, and also uh, get the audiobook of Grayshade from our very own Trend Sparks, um, but you can also pre order the tabletop role-playing game of Grey Shade, which will be out late this year that is going to come to you from designer Brandon O'Brien and from the amazing and awesome people at Alligator Alley Entertainment. Uh, and you can also pre-order the final book in the Grey Assassin trilogy, Heretic, which I am working through as we speak and uh, will have completed and back off to uh, my editor and then we'll have a couple of other runs through it, but it will be out by the summer as originally scheduled. So we're looking good there. Um, so uh, yes, please consider checking that at exclamation point Grey Shade. And as always, exclamation point BLM, Black Lives Matter, important to affirm and assert the significance and importance of black lives, exclamation point help now, the World Health Organization page on suicide prevention, important to reach out to others when you need help and reach out to others when they need help as well, and exclamation point Ukraine, U-K-R-A-I-N-E, to help the people of Ukraine as they fight back against an illegal and illegitimate war with bravery and courage and send the message we will do so for others in the future. Quick note on schedule, we have Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks today, then we will be back on Tuesday. Tuesday, I'll be playing the Patreon fueled chat chosen game of the month, Californium, uh, which is a based on uh, inspired by Philip K. Dick. So that's going to be cool. And then I'll be playing uh, more of Ghosts of Saltmarsh over on uh, D and D. Uh, sorry, GOG Com's Twitch channel uh, with Pen and Pixels. Uh, and then I will be back on Thursday night with more of the unbelievably awesome Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And then we'll be back to you next Saturday with more Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks. And that will be the last stream of March. And then we'll be moving into to what promises to be a very busy and exciting and awesome, amazing April. So that's what's going on with that. But now the time has come to introduce the amazing people. So I'm going to unmute myself so they know that we are ready to go. And then I'm going to unmute them so we can hear these lovely people. And last but certainly not least, uh, I'm going to send us over to dun, 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 the incredible crew, which is ready to go, um, which is prepared and ready um, and uh, has been engaged in attempting to... Um, uh, sort of perform a certain kind of alchemy, um, <laughs> which they do not know uh, if they'll be able to manage or not. So uh, that's that's the green room discussion today. Um, I'm now going to leave forever while these people... No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's great to have these people with us. And I'm going to start with the uh, gentleman at the top left of the screen. And that is the amazing and awesome Johnny Pippen who's back with us. Johnny, good to see you, my friend. How is life in the universe with you? Um, and uh, yeah, maybe we should just like have every one of us talk about, I also love dune and saw it 75 million times uh we've there was a lot of uh, chatter about how good <laughs> dune part two was in the green room so how are you johnny how's life in the universe with you and uh who are you playing this evening well uh life is is better now uh i was in new york for a brief period of time trying to help my daughter move which ended up being a complete disaster and i have horror stories to tell about 
newer pest control problems and property management situations. So uh, mm. don't ask. I don't want to tell anymore. Oh, I've, I've told the story <laughs> twice and it's terrible. Um, oh, no. Otherwise, yeah, I've seen Dune a couple of times. I've seen some really great other movies out there a couple of times. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of good cinema out right now, and I'm 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 kind of surprised it's March. Um, but otherwise, I'm doing okay. Um, the big plan to move to California, back to California, is about to happen, probably in the middle of April. But uh, uh, there isn't a final date yet, so things have been kind of shifting. And so, for now, I will be here, hanging out with you guys, playing Titus Littlefoot, a engineer Zach. That's it. That's right. I remember it now. I, I was like, I was like, I wasn't sure what he's a person who does things. Yes, um, uh, Titus Littlefoot, who has been uh, has been sort of. Um, bearing his soul in a way, uh, discussing things of great importance and measure to him, which has been really great to see. Very excited to have uh, Titus and, of course, to have Johnny back with us. So good to see you, Johnny. Good to see you as well. Toya Kristen Finley back with us as well. Um, Toya, uh, it is good to see you. Um, how How is the world and the universe and everything uh, by you as we speak? Also, how is your awesome dog? And also, who are you playing today? Uh, well, my awesome dog. I have two awesome dogs. Thank you. You just have I know, but the this big is... one because she can't fit in my lap. Listen, I'm only about the ones that I see. Okay. That's okay. All that well, the the little one just started barking as you asked about her. Well, yeah. Um, obviously. Yes. Good taste. Uh, <laughs> I have only seen the original Dune, which I saw on cable when I was very very small in the 1980s, and I only remember Sting blue eyes and the dude who kind of blew up like a balloon like that's the lasting imagery i have from that mm -hmm. and and probably that tremors stole from that idea anyway um i just came back from gdc so i'm not quite sure how things are in my neighborhood but gdc was a good time as it always is good. and i am playing nals darkly who is or Nalik, who is a human bard who does things. <laughs> is a human bard who does things. Um, yes, and uh, they're going to be doing even more things uh, coming up, uh, I, as, as we will see as we get into more intrigue this evening. Always a pleasure to have Toya with us, and also, of course, a pleasure to have uh, the awesome and amazing Cat Rambo with us uh, here. It's good to see you, Cat. Cat um, also just back recently from uh, an awesome conference. How, how was ICFA, Cat, and how's life in the universe with you, and who are you playing today? It was amazing. Uh, I got so much time hanging with other writers and some of my very favorite people. And then I left the 85 degree weather and came back to snow. So that was mm -hmm. sad. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and that's very sad. Um, but I just did book con uh, here in South Bend with my nephew uh, this today, which was super cool. Anyway, I am running Fob, a lizard folk rogue with many knives and an occasionally ferocious bite. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I always, always like a uh, clutch ferocious. I feel like just at the right times, uh, Fob's, Fob's bite is powerful. Um, always a pleasure to have Kat with us. And last but certainly not least, uh, always good to have the amazing Zach Clay with us as well, the uh, busiest man in showbiz. Um, there's a lot going on for Zach lately, but all well-deserved and all awesomeness. Um, how you doing, Zach? How is life in the universe with you? Zach was the first one who brought up the the greatness of Dune 2 is the greatest thing of all time uh, type of thing. So that it was it began, the conversation began there. So um, yeah, Zach, uh, Dune 2, amazing. Um, as amazing as the character you play tonight, I think not. Who is that character? Um, and uh, and so on. And uh, how's life in the universe on your neck of the woods? Uh, life in the universe in my neck of the woods is great. Uh, love living in a basically blend between suburban and rural is where I live. It's actually very similar to uh, where you live, Greg. Mm -hmm. um, uh, nice being able to take walks and not, you know, have to get run over by cars or walk by gas stations or other stuff. Um, so yeah, my literal neck of the woods is great. And Dune 2 is also great. And uh, have some family coming into town this weekend. Uh, my dad is reviving a uh, barbecue family business, or sorry, I should say family barbecue business <laughs> that we had. Um, let me get my adjectives straight there. 
Um, <laughs> he had to revive it because the rest of the family uh, yeah. um, <laughs> was consumed. Yeah, yes, yes. Just... yes. <laughs> Zach's family is really spicy, <laughs> and uh... I didn't even realize that that's what that order insinuates. Just... Yes, um... but the most important thing, Zach, is what style of barbecue? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Texas barbecue. Um, ah. So yeah, so uh, back in. Uh, I think starting in the 70s and 80s, um, my grandparents owned Clay's Barbecue, uh, several locations in Southern California, including uh, La Jolla and San Diego and uh, several other cities that I don't remember. And then one up here in the Bay Area. Um, but we haven't had the restaurants in a while, but we're bottling the original sauce again, as well as all the seasonings and original recipes and pulling up old clips of my grandparents' uh, with their restaurant featured in you know the san diego chronicle and like all this stuff and so uh today was the launch of that website i'll, I'll put it in chat as we end probably yeah uh, in case you guys want to buy some barbecue sauce or seasonings we put this uh truffle garlic salt on like everything we eat and it's absolutely amazing um so yeah they had a, a little special event at my dad's uh he works at a store that sells appliances and it's uh, one of the biggest appliances stores in the Bay Area, and he was able to sell and make barbecue at his store today for people that were coming into. They have this huge like sale and everything. So yeah, it was great. And my cousins, one of them is a professional chef. Yes, a little bit of clay in every bite. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like is well is done, it Proxima. Human? Well done. Hopefully, hopefully not. Yep. Soylent never, yep. green is Zach's people. <laughs> what have I? What have I done? Um, <laughs> But anyway, uh, one of my cousins is a is a professional culinary chef, and the other one's uh, a home cook, and they're brother and sister, and so they're in town, and they're helping my dad cook the barbecue stuff, and so yeah, nice little family weekend. Um, but speaking of barbecue, tonight we're playing Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks. What does that have to do with barbecue? I was waiting. <laughs> Watch the episode to find out. <laughs> Just you wait. Now I have to like work in sauce. I am to, playing. Yeah. Yes, I'm playing Doctor Keldren Keldon Jaraxis. Man, I need to need to have my vocal warm up. Apparently, uh, Cybermancer Dendis also said that in the backwards order. Uh, I'm going to start speaking Pig Latin, guys. <laughs> but yeah, I'm here. I'm excited. Let's do it. Awesome. Let, let us make it happen. And uh, it's good to see everybody in chat, by the way. Thank you all. Please spread the word. Let everyone know. Also, one completely side note off the game. I did go this afternoon with family to watch the University of Connecticut Huskies. Uh, the women obliterated nice. Jackson State, um, yes. which was uh, so go Huskies. Uh, the last time we did this last year, uh, the women did not get all the way to the championship, but the UConn men did win their championship and the UConn men mm. are the number one seed. So just saying this has nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but um, go Huskies and they have the best fight song. Okay, so rather um, the men than the women. Yep, yep. 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 Well, so right. I was going to say because there is the Tennessee men are in it too. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I, I just, I can't support the UConn women. You know why? What? Anyway. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well. Yeah. Listen. With no context, I'm like, okay. <laughs> this. This is I'm a, a misogynist. <laughs> yeah. All right. But uh, I, anyway, I I, uh, I hear I hear I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, it is a pleasure though to have everyone here. Let <laughs> us get into it, folks. Um, in our last session, uh, as I fire up the music for the day, which is going to be this. Okay. Um, in our last session, uh, the members of and in fact, let's bring us over to the map here. The uh, members of the crew um, of uh, both from Camria and also from the Sunrider who have come together here in common purpose um, have come down to the shadow realm of Celis. Um, where they were hoping to get some help from Elu Whisperwind's parents uh, in A, giving them more information about this beacon that uh, brought Dr. Jaraxxus and Titus Littlefoot to the planet in the first place, and might also help figure out why the Primarch of Camria seems to have lost his mind and is now killing people um, with, uh, you know, without apparently particular care um, for who they are without reason. Um, and so the crew has come here to try to enlist their help. The problem is that Celis has its own issues, specifically the disappearance of many of its citizens, um, its mysterious disappearance of many of its citizens. And so the party has managed to track down um, some information which suggests um, that some of them may have been associated with uh, this, um, uh, this ritual 
of uh, becoming these um, sort of spiritual speakers, spirit callers, uh, and that the initiation for the spirit callers um, also seems to lead to a fairly large group of people that actually don't show up again, or at least uh, disappear. But they also have been gathering information about those who did the disappearance, including um, Nihilestri, uh, who was one of the people that disappeared, and they have come to Nihilestri's home to investigate it. Last session, we thought that we might actually actually get them investigating it right then, except that as they were headed down there, uh, Nalls Darkly specifically, Nalls found uh, that uh, Nalls was being followed. Uh, she was being followed by this group of mysterious cloaked figures. Thanks to some quick thinking on Nalls' part and some uh, tailing, uh, some careful tailing by Fob, um, they were able to uh, get to a public place and thus prevent this uh, clearly intended ambush. Um, and the uh, cloaked figures have now disappeared, but the party already has had to deal with an ambush earlier in this, uh, you know, gathering of information, and so is deeply concerned about whether or not they are now on someone's list because they're getting too close uh, to the truth. So we will see what that means. But until the party gets this uh, solution solved, uh, sorry, gets this problem solved, they're not going to be able to get any help from uh, the Sil the Silesians. So they need to do this sooner rather than later. Thus, the party has come. Uh, uh, to the map that you see before you. And just as we ended our last session, uh, the party had made the collective decision, we are going to go to Naya's home. And the quote was uh, from Dr. Taraxis, all right then, let us go to Naya's home. And so that is where we are going to pick up today's session uh, see, with the party barbecue. heading in that direction. Um, let us head to Naya's home and have truffle salt. Delicious, please go, go to... Um, so we're going to, we're going to basically do a lot of product placement chat. Uh, I'm going to yeah. be, by the end of this session, we are going to be sponsored by <laughs> Dune 2, Alchemy and freaking Zach's family's bar barbecue. Zach's and barbecued family. And we will fill this and, uh, we will have reaction videos. Zach's uh, barbecued amazing. family. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> tr yeah. Truffle garlic salt. Yes. Yes. It was truffle garlic salt. That is important, Emily. No question. That, yes. that, that is a critical point. Um, yep. All right, so uh, let me bring this back over to the party. Now, that is what you said last was the first thing you were going to do was go to Naya's home. But of course, if you're like, wait, I forgot. First, I wanted to, you can do that if you wish, but that was where you were headed. Is the party still content with going in that direction or not? Um, so I was actually asking this in the green room. Okay. I kind of felt like right before Titus was poisoned, we were going to warn the shopkeep that sold us the garments that something was happening with the merchants around and to be careful. Um, but I don't know if anybody else remembers that or wants to warn her. So uh, I do I remember yeah, that. Okay. I, I, say, I don't remember that, but it seems like a good idea to me. And we the person who sold us the uh, the garments. Oh, I thought for a second, I thought you were talking about the baker. I was about to be like, we could go get some baked goods. <laughs> no, baby, we're not eating people here. That's not what this is about. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a who eats people tradition. except in... <laughs> yes. Ding. Um, yeah, we could go do that real quick. Run down to the star water lady or person. Um, you, okay. Um, you can certainly do that if you like. Um, so, uh, if, if you wish to do that, um, and we probably don't even have to necessarily RP that unless you want to, because we've, we've spoken, you've spoken to her before. Um, mm -hmm. but you could let her know. You might remember also that she had herself indicated, and in fact, um, both she and the merchant uh, that had uh, that you had also spoken to separately from this had also indicated that they thought there were some weird goings on um, around here. So this probably would not come as a complete surprise that there were some shenanigans uh, afoot. Um, just a quick question though about that: Does the whole group, the whole party, want to go? I just want to make sure I'm I'm clear on that and do this before doing that and then heading back to Naya's home or just one of you i just want to make sure i know i i think the whole group should stick yeah. together considering okay. what's going on yep. right now no party splitting okay um so yeah you're able to go back there i should note that when you get uh back to the uh merchant in question there is another person just random you know uh citizen who seems to be there as well but one of the group of you could pull the merchant aside if you wished and let her know um quickly if you want to do that I gestured to Nalik. 
Okay, then Malik is going to take her aside and fill her in on um, everything that's just happened, in fact. Um, what's his name? Nolus? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Rolus with an R. Rolus. Okay, oh, sorry. Rolus. Yes. Rolus, the merchant who disappeared, and also that, you know, there was an assassination attempt on us with the coin. Um, and, you know, because she's already sensed that something is wrong, I'm just giving her very specific details on the wrong. Okay. Um, yes. And this is the one who sold you the the star, the star crystals, right? So this is Varellen. Um, so, uh, and Varellen thanks you um, after you've told her this. And um, Well, wait. So the there's two separate people. There's Varellen who sold... Uh, who did the star crystal thing with, with Titus. Titus? Yep. There was then a seamstress that we bought. Oh, this star is the seamstress that you're from. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. You're talking to the seamstress. seamstress. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. was the one who told who told us about Rolus, who was a merchant that right. disappeared yep. before. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. I don't. I think I may not have even named the seamstress, which I, is why. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's why. I think Varellen also, Varellen also witnessed Titus being poisoned, if I remember correctly. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Yeah. The but. Um, I believe she did. Yeah. So okay. So yeah, the seems that was why I was like, I was like, well, where? What about the seamstress? But right, she didn't. I she did not give her name. So um, so yeah. So the seamstress then um does thank you uh does thank you for the information, um and uh sort of quietly informs you that there were several uh cloaked figures that passed through this kind of main drag you know that large circle there that you can see with all of the different stands and stuff like that um that there were several that had passed through there from the southern spur that is where naya's home is heading north um quickly out of the area and that um according to her they ended up leaving out this way and this oh, sorry i take that back uh this way i'm sorry um, and this way, of course, is the way that you would go if you were going to head down, you know, here towards the main city of Celis. Um, so she had seen and sort of taken note of the fact that they came out looking, you know, sort of just hurry, hurriedly moving up to the north and then immediately went down this way. So. And um, you sure they haven't passed back through here? Not since I have been here. So <laughs> Draxus just looks at Nalik and the seamstress awkwardly staring at each other. <laughs> so, um, so, um, yeah. So on that, so this, so that's the information the seamstress is able to convey. Um, and otherwise, um, assuming that that is what you had to say, you can, you know, head back down to Naya's home if you wish, um, having notified her. She does tell you though that she will keep an eye out to see if they return. Um, and she will definitely keep that in mind because obviously this is of concern to her as well. Um, and uh, so she will keep an eye out, she says. We're uh, headed to see about someone else who disappeared. Can you give us a signal if trouble's afoot? And she says, I will do what I can, but I would have to depart my stand to do it. Um, I, and she sort of thinks a little bit and she says, at the very least, I should be able to send someone. Um, I have, and she kind of thinks a bit, and she says, perhaps if I were to ask Varellen, he has several crystals which I know makes some noise if they are dropped to the ground, almost like a little sound of a bang, usually something that he might give to children, let us say. They're worthless crystals usually, no particular value, but... They do make a noise loud enough to attract attention. I could, if you wish, ask him um, to keep a watch as well. I know you were speaking to him before. And if you wish, he could come by and would be able to notify you. Or if I see someone, I could. One of those crystals making that sound would certainly alert you. That's good enough for us. It'll give us a lead, at least. Thank you, Varela. Well, that's the seamstress, right? Um, yeah. The seamstress who still doesn't have a name. Yeah, yeah still. <laughs> and she says, um, my name, Anon An Anonymia. Um, so she, uh, she nods, um, and returns to mm -hmm. her customer. All right. I'll put down Nimia for sure. There you go. 
Okay. Nimia. <laughs> Perfect. The seamstress. Okay. Great. Uh, all right. So, okay. Um, when you head back down then to having done the alert that you wish to do, when you head back down uh, to Naya's home, uh, remember that it is down here, basically in this in this region, and it is above this bakery, um, which Nalls you know quite well now. Um, and there is a winding outside stairway that leads up to her door. You do not see the cloaked figures that you saw previously. Um, there does not seem to be anyone else now waiting in the alleyways. Um, and uh, if you climb up the stairs to where her apartment is, um, you discover when you get there uh, that the door to her apartment is locked. Uh, Fab, you good with locks? If you would like this to be unlocked, it can be unlocked, I'm certain. Yeah, but let's make sure this ain't booby trap first. I will take a look for <laughs> traps. Let's and take then... let's do an investigation check for that. Alright. And see what we get. Duraxis will stand in front of the group facing the market and kind of like body block whatever we're doing. Pre, not not a lot of people passing by, but yes, you can certainly do that. Um, it helps that it's up on this winding stair. Although the mm -hmm. fact that you all have to kind of be single file is maybe a little odd if people were looking up at, you know, why are there people mm -hmm. there? But I rolled a 13, but it's not showing up on... Uh... Huh. Yeah, I don't let me... see it yet. Let me click around and see if I can... might be because it's the uh extension that connects the indie beyond and roll 20 so maybe it's when you had to like reopen roll 20 or something oh there you go that, that's me i was looking to see oh, if it was okay. working <laughs> it is let me try one more time well i'm gonna just uh roll it this way okay the detect traps there we go 15 yes um yeah you don't think so um and this seems like uh you'll you'll need to make a check to unlock it but this looks like a pretty simple lock as well uh fob one thing to note it looks like this door has been if you had to guess um either relocked or redone or something has been rebuilt about it recently um, again, no traps here, but it's almost as if something has been relatively recently redone about this door. As if the mechanism, like a, sort of a new mechanism has been installed or something like that. Like they're, like the lock has been replaced? Or Possibly. The lock or, augmented. or the hand, no, that it would more likely that it would have been replaced. That the handle, in fact the whole thing, the handle, the opening mechanism, and the lock all look newer than the door itself. I report this to my friends in case they have opinions on it, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and unlock it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I did not unlock it. You, you're you like, I can... Um, yeah, it does It does not unlock. Um, the uh, and, and as you're sort of fiddling with it, Fob, um, again, your, your fiddling with it would have set up any remaining traps if there were any, but definitely, again, no traps. But as you're fiddling with it, you it strikes you as a little strange because the lock does seem simple, but as you're trying to sort of get it open, it does feel like it's a little more than necessary for a regular door. Like, it's just a regular apartment, as far as you know. Um, but the lock is a little more complex than you might have expected. Um, I say this is an unusually sophisticated lock for a simple apartment. And there's no clear other entrance to this. Nope. Are, are these homes and buildings almost like carved into the cave itself? No, some of them, some of them are, but this particular one is uh, built um, of uh, sort of the same dark stone as the rest of the cave, but it looks like it's been quarried um, and brought here and then built. Um, but it's pretty, as I say, this, it's kind of, 
it's taller than it is wide. This doesn't seem like a very big thing. And even the staircase itself, the external staircase, is somewhat slender. Um, it's not a big place, like not a huge building or anything like that. And there are no windows? No windows. Huh. In the hinges... This is a... Are... I'm say, sorry. Say Go ahead. Sorry. The hinges are on the inside of the door or the outside of the door? The hinges do look to be inside the door, not on the outside. Yes. Check it. Also strikes you as odd because it's more expensive to do it that way, Fob. Usually they go on the outside. We definitely should look inside here, but uh, perhaps kicking it down would be a another possibility. Well, before before we do that... Um... Would it be possible for Nalls to take her rapier and try to open it, Go you know, it. instead of a lockpick? I don't know what skill mm. to check. <laughs> uh, Move away with your paltry tools. <laughs> Swashbuckle the lock. No, I get it. Um, I, uh, you could try to just do, to sort of, you know, pick the lock yourself using uh, dexterity on this, Nalls. You could basically borrow Fob's tools. You're not okay. proficient in it, so you don't get the benefits that Fob does, but you can still try to do it. Um, yeah. So do I just I'm not using my dexterity I'm using one of my other dexterity skills No you would be using a dexterity For you it would just be a basic dexterity check Because you okay. don't have proficiency in thieves tools I don't think So it would just be the dex check no. So it just like this where it, ha it says Saving throws just roll that uh, no, there should be, you should be able to have like, I think just you, you the, just click on just the above decks, that, where right? It says oh, decks. okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, that, but it says saving throws in that little, um, UI thing. So there's S-T-R-D-E-X and then C-O-N, that one. Is that what I'm clicking on? But he's not asking you to roll a saving throw. It's just, uh -huh. you see the abilities from left to right above that? Yes. 14, 14, 14, so on? Yes. You're going to click the plus two for decks. In All right. The, Okay. Yeah. There you go. Ten. So uh again, you, you get the sense as you're as you're sort of like working with it and all you hear several like satisfying and uh possibly like ooh, you know, clicks, but then there's like <laughs> which does not sound like the right sound. Um you are not able to open it. Both of you, I should say, both Fob and Nalls, you do feel like you have it in you or you know you had it in you it doesn't it doesn't seem like this is impregnable but it's a lot it's harder than you might have thought mm. is there a, a consequence if if fob just continues to try um no except that it's going no basically no but it's going to take more time so uh if you if you do it again it's going to be another probably 10 or 15 minutes of kind of fiddling about while you're up on the stairs, which is fine. There's not a lot of people around. I'm just letting you know that would be one of the obvious I'm, consequences. I'm going to do so. How about a 23? There you go. <laughs> okay. You're like, no, damn it, this way. Um, <laughs> this time it does. Um, and it may have been also, you know, the, the sort of the combined effect of everybody working on it. It does uh, finally click into place. And um, so the door unlocks, which means you're able to open the door um, inwards. Uh, and so you can do that if you wish. I don't want to assume that you did, but it is. I, I, Fob does not go first into rooms, so Fob will step aside and let someone else do whatever it is they wish to do. Nals will also let someone enter first. Draxus <laughs> okay. will very, uh, it's his pleasure to go into a room first as he <laughs> We're all makes going, sure. Got it. Yeah, make sure he's recording. I'd like to well, put out, chat for the visual that all of them are also like jostling on this single file staircase. Like, here you go first, like up <laughs> let, and down. Uh, let me come <laughs> first. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, hey, Amanda, again, welcome. Okay, so Draxis, um, when you go in, you enter what is basically a single room. Um, tucked under the eaves of this building's roof, this small garret is basically a stone walled single room with a high ceiling. And there are. Uh, colorful painted curios that are decorating the shelves along the walls. And near the rear of the room, there is a small ladder uh, near the rear, which leads up to what looks like a platform with a makeshift bed. I should also note that on one other wall, the opposite wall from where all the curios, all the shelves are, is uh, a decent sized wardrobe as well. And there's also a desk near that ladder on which are many, many different multicolored bottles with paintbrushes Ooh. sticking out of them. 
<laughs> so, uh, one one thing that Nalls is curious about is if there are like any false bottoms anywhere or anything that's hidden or maybe something that's you know hidden under the bed. Okay. So where do you want to where do you want to head Nalls to do that? Like what's your focus? Um on? you said there's a closet, right? Yeah, like a ward like a standing wardrobe type. Okay. Of thing. So, um, looking through the wardrobe, you know, if there's a door to Narnia or something <laughs> in the back, um, or, you know, like, um, any, uh, boxes that might be under clothes or, okay. um, little chests, anything, anything underneath the wardrobe. Okay. So I got you on wardrobe. I will come back to that. Uh, Titus Fobdraxis, where are you checking in this room? I just, this is just still recovering from the poison. Yeah. So he's just kind of like being casual and just taking in the scene without like trying to get himself in even more trouble. I mean, he did touch the coin after all. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So he's back there. I also should mention, I believe Gamork, did Gamork go back? I don't remember if you had Gamork with you or not. I think Gamork. Gamork's, Gamork, Gamork is staying with us. Okay. Is with because, you. Yeah. Right. So Gamork is also just, I, I just almost forgot that Gamork is there standing on the stairs, like coming up his dire wolf. Anyway, Gamork himself yeah. basically fills maybe, up the room. Not not quite. Maybe we, can we, maybe he should stand guard. Well, no, we should keep, I was saying he could stand guard outside, but then people he, are just going to see a wolf outside of a building. So he could stand in the door. Yeah. He not definitely would block the door. It. You know, if yeah. he does that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he'll be just inside, I guess. Um, okay, uh, Titus is hanging, will... hanging tight. So what about Fob and Draxus? Yeah, I will... Um, Draxus... So it pretty much seems like it's a singular room with no other attached rooms yes. or anything. And then this ladder that goes up. Like this artist's garret, it looks like, basically. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, Draxus will start, you know, sort of find footage. Like, we'll start going around and getting... Uh, you know, visuals of every curio and basically like doing a full 360 of the room. Okay. Slowly as everyone else specifically goes to where they go. Okay. Fob, what about you? I'm checking the bed specifically underneath it. Okay. Um, all right. And Titus, and you, I'm sorry, Titus, you're just hanging back watching, like not picking up anything in particular. At the yeah. Moment. I'm just, it, Titus is just kind of trying to recover. So he's not, okay. he's, he's trying to be more observant than anything else. And if you want a perception roll, I'll be happy to give you one. Okay, no, that's okay. For, I, uh, possibly I may need that in a minute. Um, okay, let's okay. start then with uh, Jaraxxus. Let me start with you. Um, let me have you do a uh, an investigation check for me, please. And then I'll come to Nalls and then Fob. 21. 21. Um, as you're doing your sweep, you notice that on the wall is a flyer uh, for an art show. Um, in a park on the shore of Moonshadow Lake. And the reason it catches your eye is yeah. that it is presented by the Karyos troupe, which is the same yep. troupe that she was part of. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing you notice as you see that is that the painted pieces that are drawn upon this flyer are very similar to the curio designs on the nearby shelves. So essentially there are these three-dimensional like uh, statuettes and so forth that have been designed and made and they look exactly like the painted pieces that you see on this um, on this flyer uh, with the uh, Karyos troop. Uh, Draxis will then take an interest in the, is there like a cabinet that these Karyos are on? Shelves, like all, shelves. like a bunch of shelves that are like on the wall. Um, uh, so. Draxus will will now go up to the shelves and will try to find at least two curios that are small enough for him to take with him, possibly. Okay. Um, I think that's that's easy enough. Actually, you can find that almost immediately. A lot of these are small, knickknacky, you know, type of things um, that uh, are all sort of different and again very very bright colors, um, which sort of stands out a bit because of the twilight, you know sort of uh, shimmering light that you've been in for a while. I guess the equivalent would be if you've ever been inside an area with a lot of um, like black light, you know, like uh, the sort of like a UV type of thing. And then you come out into the sunshine or something. You're like, oh, like that's what it feels like. Like very, very bright colors in contrast to that. Um, and so you're able to get a couple of these things. I mean, there's many of them that you could get, but two as an example would be two what look like sort of small 
uh, mushrooms, Draxus, like basically like the mushrooms that grow on the shores of the lake, um, but small and quite uh, finely and articulately de uh, detailed. Could I, could Draxus take the mushrooms and then one other type of curio that's not a mushroom? Sure. Um, you can take two of the mushrooms that if you were to take one curio, there's all different types. Um, one of them like, is... Are, are some of them almost like, what what medium does this seem to be? Like, like, uh, like Nihilestri took carved pieces stone. of ceramic? Yep. Oh, okay. Carved These are stone. all carved. Okay. Yep. And then they're painted. Yes, that's right. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um... Are there any carved animals? Uh, there are carved animals. There's one, in fact, that is a carved, what looks like a carved butterfly. Great. All right, I'll, ha I'll take the two mushrooms and the, the butterfly and then keep going around the room. Okay. Uh, Nalls, when you open the wardrobe, um, you can see a number of what look like smocks, uh, basically a bunch of things with like, you know, paint splatters and things like that and, and aprons and so on, but a lot of, of sort of obviously coverall material that's designed to protect against these things. Um, there's nothing fancier than that, but there are many of these smocks that are, and there's a lot of them. Um, there is no Narnia in the back of the, uh, in the, back of the thing, but um, there is um, what you would describe as, that there are, so there are sort of shoes and uh, sandals, um, and the shoes and sandals on the bottom, there are two pairs of shoes, two pairs of sandals basically down below. Um, and as, because you said you were looking underneath and like in the shoes, um, on the bottom of these shoes, of the sandals, on both pairs are what look like um, little flecks of pink and green, but they are not painted. These are not pigments. They feel like they may almost have been like a kind of uh, stone powder or clay that was stepped on, as if you were stepping on like a, you know, the uh, on like um, a sandy beach, like a clay area of a sandy beach, right? Like when you dig down, this and these are the sort of little bits of ground in stuff that's on the soles of these sandals. Uh, pink and green. I was about to make an AKA sorority joke, um, <laughs> but I'm wondering. Um, because uh, Draxus and Titus have, I, I think they have ways of um, preserving findings. Because um, one thing that Nulls would want to do is maybe get the flex of this um, clay and and um, preserve it so that we can find where this is. Or um, I don't know, you know, Nulls understands they have this magic-y stuff that can somehow analyze things and figure out stuff about them um so she'll want to preserve this however she can um but you said there so there are non-open toed shoes as well right no no there are two pairs of sandals they okay, and they are actually they they are to be clear they both are actually closed toed but they're not um fully covered so like there's yeah. like straps over the front of the toes. There's on nothing both hidden of them. in the. There's nothing hidden in the shoes. Not that you can tell, no. Um, is is Nalls picking up anything in the atmosphere here? Uh, do you mean like of a of a sort of like strange or mystical nature, right? Because like she's that? also got the star crystal garment on as well. That's right. Um, yeah. Not not anything that you note from that. Although there is a pretty strong smell of paint. Um, not, you know, in the apartment generally, but also even here, there's a kind of mustiness and a little bit of almost a paint dust, you know, when you mm -hmm. open the wardrobe in the first place. So this feels like it's, there's a lot of, this has been used quite a bit, you think? Okay. Well, it, so it's not like, uh, something has been painted recently. You don't think that so. That would be noticeable. Yeah. You don't think so. Okay. Um, so. Hey, Greg. Yeah, Sure. Can you re-describe the room besides the wardrobe and, and the curios? I'm sorry, what? Oh, I, I muted myself. I was talking and I muted myself. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> um, I was, I was oh. just going to call out to um, Titus and Daraxus. Uh, uh, Titus, if you fill up to it, but also Daraxus, there appears to be uh, some interesting clay or dust on the bottom of these sandals. Maybe favorite stomping grounds of hers. Can we uh, preserve this so we don't lose it?
Titus looks up at Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus says, Round up pieces of clay, you say? Hmm. I, I don't know. I don't have a... a you're more sciencey than I am, Titus. T Titus, are you okay? Titus kind of... That's, that's a very Titus odd begins freeze. to move forward. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Titus begins to move forward uh, to go take a look at the, uh, the the bottom parts of the wardrobe. What I was asking, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna loop this into what I was asking uh, while we were um, while we were, were sorting this part out. Yep. Um, can you re-describe the other elements that we haven't already interacted with in the room? So we've interacted with this wardrobe that I'm, that Titus is about to go take a look at. There was the curios that Jaraxxus just um, collected from the shelf. What else is in the room again? There's also, so there's a ladder leading up to the bed, which is where Fob is checking underneath the bed momentarily. There's also a desk okay. um, right by that ladder on which there are um, some, a couple of like what look like, you can't tell either papers or documents or something, but also pigment uh, jars you would have to get, you would guess. Like a lot of these brightly colored bottles with paintbrushes sticking out of them on the desk as well. Okay. I want to, I would like you to come back to Titus once everybody else has taken an action, but I'll follow through with this like real quick on the wardrobe thing. Okay. Sounds good. Um, So Tit Titus will take a look and collect some samples there. Uh, of what uh, Knowles is pointing out and say, I'm not sure what we can do to help, uh, but I'll, I'll do some of that sciencey stuff and gives a, you know, a sarcastic look over at, uh, um, it's your axis. Okay. It's your axis will nod. Uh, question, Titus, how are you, um, cause this is going to have something to do with what you discover as a result of it. How are you preserving these? Like, are, are you scraping off the bottom of these or what are you doing to try to preserve these things? There's nothing mechanical I'm looking for as much as sort of the procedure you're using. Cause it has, it'll have something to do with, Never mind. I just want to know. <laughs> so, okay. Being an engineer and being a medic, Titus would have various types of things that were um, sanitary or yep. um, probably able to like preserve samples just in case for yep. like if I'm trying to sample a poison or something that somebody's eaten to analyze later, that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a, something that could be, you know, either in their equipment or as a part of one of the drones, the drone might be able to like, you know, as a part of the rig, just kind of like go down, sample something in a in a in a way that doesn't contaminate, yep. or it has does a minimal amount of contamination. So he would probably use one of his drones to collect a sample and then go with a minimum amount of contamination, given the fact that his hands have been, you know, touching things, including poison. And if you're so. that's right. And if you're using your rig, does it is it analyzing while it does this, uh, or just preserving? No, it's just preserving. It will. Ha I would have to take a step to analyze it. Okay, sounds good. All right, so you're able to do that. Um, and as you're doing that, Fob, um, you uh, are able to head up the ladder to this bed. Um, it is a little ambitious to call this thing a bed. Um, it is a basically a mattress on a platform which has clearly been built in the fine tradition of artists' lofts throughout time and space um, to basically... This is clearly DIY and was not designed to be part of the room to begin with. There are wood braces basically underneath it um, that are on the side. And you can definitely tell that this is not the kind of... You would, you would not have little kids jumping around on a bed like this without it collapsing. Like it's, you know... Um, but it's certainly sturdy enough, of course, to hold your weight. Uh, the mattress is um, just sort of lying flat. Um, one thing that is noticeable about this, though, is that the bed appears to have been made. Um, again, not that it's much of a bed, but it's a mattress. It's got a sheet and a blanket, and the sheet and the blanket seem smoothed and, like, um, you know, basically covering over the mattress, um, which, again, is quite thin and just sitting on the platform above. What is the quality level of the linens? 
really pretty rough cloth not quite canvas but it's pretty rough cotton like if that like it's not it's not very it, it's a uh, it, it's some rustic rustic sheets let's put it that way okay so fob is going to do two things and okay. one is the bed is coming unmade because fob's going to search it okay. really thoroughly but okay. during all of this Fob is a little unnerved by the curios, and you can see Fob periodically just looking back as though to make sure that the curios are not watching Fob. Uh, okay. So if those eyes are shifting, Greg, Fob is going to notice. <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> you look back once and realize that two of the mushrooms have disappeared. You're like, wait, wait, <gasps> ah! Um, and Jaraxxus is looking at you suspiciously. No. Um, so, okay, uh, so let me have you, as you're sort of looking through the bed, let me have you make an investigation check, please, for me. Oh, it's a big seven. You're like, eh. The bed, um, you know, as you're sort of looking through, there's definitely nothing, I mean, the mattress is too thin to have anything inside it. I mean, other than barely enough, you know, stuffing or whatever to kind of keep, be vaguely softer than the floor would have been. Um, and one thing you can tell for sure, Although the sheets are, relatively speaking, clean, um, and again, have been smoothed over, they also are, like, well used. Like, these are older sheets. This is not, okay. this is not brand new. Okay. Um, okay. And so uh, they have seen some, you know, use over the years. Um, also, the uh, bed itself uh, and the platform is slightly tilted uh, towards the floor. And you think that maybe as you're sort of looking through the bed and you hear these kind of ominous for like creaking from the braces that the thing may actually have slightly tilted over time towards the you know towards the braces you don't know how sturdy um they would be um one thing you can slay say slay one thing you can slay one thing you can say is that uh what i was going to say is that there are these slats these wooden slats underneath the bed that hold it up on top of this platform um, and uh, between the slats, uh, you don't find anything in particular of value, um, but it clearly from the sort of, it, do, it seems like it's been a while since anyone has tried to move the mattress itself. Okay. Sheets, okay. yeah, but like the mattress, not so much. Okay. I will gingerly descend. Okay. Um, Titus, that means I come back to you because you had said you wanted me to check back with you. Um, when uh, folks have done their other specific searches so far. So as Titus was sam doing the sample, he was still really paying attention to what Fob was doing, taking in what every, all the other um, characters were doing. And he would like to deduce or try to deduce or try to get a sense of two facts. Um, one seems a little bit more basic and one seems a little bit more um, challenging. The basic fact that he wants to try to figure out is, is there anything in this room of value or anything that we've discovered based on what everybody else has done that would warrant a lock and a door, you know, that was so difficult for Fob to initially get into. Right. And the second piece of information that he'd like to try to deduce from that as well is whether the door has been installed relative to the last time like that the room looks like it was occupied in some way on a regular basis. We're definitely not going to be determined like like whether dust or whatever like they, like the room hasn't been, like been interacted with in some way, but was the door a part of the existence of the person who normally lived there? and you know use that space or was it something new after they were no longer regularly being there so as part of the deduction process with that i'll start with the second first um you can tell that the hinges which are on the inside um that the hinges look to be of a similar age to the rest of the door um the only okay. thing that's new about the door is the handle and locking mechanism which does look newer than the rest of it um and so you don't think like the door has been replaced, you know, over the last few weeks, but the locking mechanism, it's possible because it is like the metal is almost gleaming, like it's in very good condition, which seems odd um, given this, the sort of condition of the rest of the room. Um, 
which leads okay. to the first deduction, which is that the only thing you haven't looked at so far, since you were talking about what in this room could do this, the only thing you haven't looked at so far is the desk, and I only mention that because that's the only place you haven't looked at that might have other stuff. Like, otherwise, unless there are secret doors and, you know, like, like trips to Narnia found in wardrobes, um, there's not a lot else that is obvious to you, at least visible on the surface. Uh, Draxus will... Titus will... Yeah, go ahead, Draxus. Go ahead. Draxus will go to the desk as as well as Titus, if Titus is also heading there. Yeah, Nels will as well. You said there are papers there. Are there also any, like, journals or books around? Not journals or books. There appears to be a cup as you sort of come over to uh, the desk, the pages themselves, so the papers look like they all have a bunch of um, uh, what, what look essentially like someone has been... Uh, sort of painting to see color mixtures like you can see that there's sort of like red green and then there's this other mixture to make another color so you can see a bunch of those things um and the uh paint bottles themselves are there mostly open and dried out by the way um these seem to be dried out with the paintbrushes in them the only thing that is not like this is in the middle of all of those papers is a small folded and closed black envelope and it stands out precisely because it's the only thing that isn't a paper that, you know, has paint uh, attempts on it. Um, I keep wanting to say swatches, but that's not right. But you know what I mean, uh, paint samples on it. Uh, does it have a, a address or label on the outside of the envelope? It does not. It is uh, blank. It's closed, but the outside does not have an address. Is it sealed? Uh, it is not sealed. If you do, you, so it's it's like face up. If you would on a, you know, you'd have to just pick it up and turn it over to see. Um, I do. Yeah. So when you do that, it's not sealed, but it was. It's been opened. Okay, I open it and read it aloud. So it. inside the envelope is a gold foiled invitation to an exclusive mm. wine party, Ooh. and the invite is dated ten days ago. And it was held at a place called the Dew Dreams Wine Garden in the canals. So yes, the, the invitation is very, very important. I also want to make sure, like there's the curios. Is there any other discernible art or sketches or, you know, something that we can actually look at um, that Naya or somebody else may have been working on? Right. The, the only thing you see that is art-related are the curios, the smocks that we already talked about, and the uh, on-the-desk paint samples slash mixtures with all of the paints there. But there are not obvious drawings or paintings or anything like that that you see here um, in the room. And even the desk itself is basically just Nalls like a flat table, more or less. Like there's no drawers in it or anything like that. So clearly she was not doing her work here. And I would say, like, even the dried out paints, it would take longer than 10 days for that to happen. Because I'm guessing, like, they're they're not, they're sort of, they're, they're, it's not like there's just a little bit of paint left in these, right? That's right. They're about half full, although they are pretty small. They're, you know, I don't know exactly, but they're small jars, small little, vi not vials, but like, little jars not huge you know kind of like size jars so there's not a lot of paint in any of them but it's not like tiny amounts yeah but the other question is why would a painter leave the jars unsealed especially uh i mean she was apparently went to this i'm guessing she went to this event but <laughs> why would she leave the jars unsealed Nalls, because you asked me that make a perception check for me please okay um how about a 25? Ah. As you look more closely at these jars, you see that as you kind of... Something weird about the paintbrushes sort of stands out to you. You pick a couple of them out, and you see that the paintbrushes... Some of the paintbrushes are from different colored... Are, are different colors than the jars in which they have been placed. In other words, there are, as an example, 
uh, red paintbrushes in the green jars. There are ochre paintbrushes in the other jars. These feel like they have been put back haphazardly and not in the same jars as they started from. Could somebody besides Naya have been here or even using this apartment? I find it very odd that these brushes are mismatched with their paint. Hmm. Braxis will, will nod. Are there any um, compartments in the desk? No, it's just a flat table. No drawers, no... Um, it's just like a... It's really more a table even than a desk. It's flat enough okay. so that you can do work on it, but there's no drawers in it or anything like that. Just four mm-hmm. legs leading down from this uh, from this desk. Decent sized Drax- desk, but yeah. Draxus says, "Well, uh, despite having to piece together what strange things we seem to find here, we have a lead." Now hold up the envelope, and we also have one more area to check and I point at the ladder as well. And, and just one one last question about those smogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, there's nothing out of the ordinary about the smocks. There are no pockets. Um, no pockets There are no for linings sure. within them. No, there are no pockets. There are on the back of each of the smocks is like a tie, you know, like a thing that allows uh-huh. you to tie around the back. Um, and the smock also, each of them has like a loop, you know, that goes around the neck basically. But that's it. They are very simple, um, Nulls. There are, as I say, not even any pockets in them. Um, I... And they all look about equally used. There's probably five or six of them, you would guess. I feel like we're missing something. Yes, it is strange. I almost wish we had um, Siti and Miko here. They seem like they would know more about her artistry. Maybe after we're done here, we can invite them to come take a look. Although, I don't know if it would be safe for them. I don't know Wait if it's a safe minute. for us. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You have that thing that uh, captures images? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, maybe, you know... That. When we get them alone, so nobody else sees, and you know, there's there's no confusion over what right. was going on. We can show them the images mm-hmm. of this apartment. I think that's great. Um, Fob, as you were coming down the ladder, which you said you had, uh, you were carefully descending. Cautiously. Cautiously yes. descending. Oh, thank you. It goes down. I thought it goes up. It, go, it goes up. up. I'm saying, but she's coming back down, down, down is what I'm saying. From oh. she was up looking at the bed, and so now she's coming uh, back down on the ladder. Um, I see. I would like you to make a perception check for me. I'm going to give this to you at plus three because, Ooh. first of all, you've been up and down this ladder, and secondly, your fob. This is your thing. All right. So plus three. So yes. that is. Eh. Don't forget, by the way, chat. Uh, cheers in chat go to the players. Inspirations Whoa. also go to the players. Not that you need one with a 28, but just saying. Wow. Um, Fob, I mentioned that the that the uh, bed itself, the platform is kind of creaking. There uh-huh. is also something, as you notice, uh, all of the rungs of the ladder, you know, as you went up, are like, rrr, 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 like creaking on the way up. Except, and you notice this when you come back down, the second to last one so as you come back down the second to last one does not creak and in fact doesn't uh bend beneath your weight at all either it's the only one of the rungs like that i want to examine that rung okay um when you look underneath the rung you can see that um and it looks like it's been kind of tied with a some kind of a string or twine underneath it is a very small silvery statuette like a talisman and it is um you can't quite make it out unless you'd have to like get it like from underneath the rail which you could you could do if you want but you can see that some small and i mean it's literally like uh as i look for some it's like as big as this so it's not it's like a very small sort of piece um okay it's just been tied under the rail so what i would like to do is wrap some of my cloak around my hand and hold it underneath the thing and then cut the string uh, 
holding it to the rung so okay. it falls into my hand. Okay. It does that, um, and it falls, like, just sort of thunk. It's a little more heavy than you might have expected slightly, Fob. Um, now you can see as you pull it free, uh, as you take it out into the light, that it is a statuette of a woman's head with flowing hair filled with flowers. And, uh, you know, very, very pretty, very exquisitely detailed. Frankly, more expensive than just about everything else you've seen in this apartment put together. Um, but, uh, you know, very, very um, sort of exquisitely made. And as I said, made out of um, silver. Um, and uh, I think I will have you... Well, no, I'm not going to have you do anything, actually. At least not yet. Um, but it definitely is striking. I say, Fob has found an incredibly valuable object. And I hold <laughs> it up. Jaraxxus uh, will come over. Ooh. And while you're still holding it, just sort of like use his, uh, you know, ocular vision and zoom in on it and everything. Can just with my own sight of Nihilestri's carving style, mm -hmm. can I sense if this was also carved by her? No. It's, at least it's not the same style at all. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, you hit can the wrong we tell line. if this was, you know, like manufactured or made by hand by an artist? The hard. To, well, you don't think it was manufactured. It's pretty likely this was made and beautifully so. Um, so I'm trying to think of which one of you actually went through this. Actually, Nalls. Let me have you make a religion check for me because you may you asked me questions not in this session a couple sessions ago that tie into why I'm asking you about this once okay. Fob shows it. So we're looking at 14. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty sure you remember um, having heard um, some uh, people talking about uh, this previously um, and specifically uh, looking at um, Rel, uh, who you may remember is the sprite uh, caretaker, talking a little bit about this. Um, you think you've seen this before. You think that this is a symbol of the fey goddess of nature, which is tied into the spirit caller stuff that you've heard about before, which is why you remember it. Um, you think the fey goddess of nature Rel referred to as Lys, L-Y-S-S. -S. So you think this is a carving or a, I guess a a uh, yeah a statuette of Lys, the Fey goddess of nature. Mm. And I don't know anything more about uh, Lys. I'm guessing that's L I S. You it's said L I S. Actually, L Y S S. L. Okay. Can Can Nalls? Can you cast detect magic? Is that one of the things that you can do? Um, hold on. I think so. Um, what are my spells? <laughs> um, no, I have detect thoughts. I don't have detect magic. Mm. Um, but again, I've got on the um, the star crystal garments. Do I sense anything um, unusual, or is there some kind of aura coming off of this? Uh, statuette not not clearly so no there's no R in particular um it definitely is of this goddess you're pretty sure but it does not seem to have any magical particularly properties that you can tell at least not there I shouldn't I shouldn't say that none that are obviously resonating with the garment or anything like that it does have an energy though um I'm not sure that you would say that um at least not an energy that's sort of you're not you're not getting even a sort of vibe or feel from that it is however the only item in the room that's like this i mean for sure including the material that it's made of can you just you said the hair was made of it was like it wasn't hair but it's flowers that make up the hair uh yeah basically that the that it's that it's run through um that's flowing hair that is filled with flowers so it okay. is regular hair but there's lots of flowers like probably more have, flowers than hair have we seen any flowers like that since we've been here no not at all okay hmm. well keepy 
very close handle on that. If you if you say it is of Lys, then that probably has something to do with the Star Callers, because I believe that they are religious. But also, it's being made of silver. It, it seems. Well, I don't know much about religions, but I suppose if of any material to make a religious symbol out of, silver is a good one, but uh, silver also seems like it could be a component for magic, maybe. Specifically mithril, by the way. Mithril oh, silver. So I see. Oh! Even more interesting. Yeah. Again, worth more than the whole rest of this apartment. Yeah. And this was like hidden under the second rung. Of it, was, it was tied to the bottom of the second rung. Mm. So this must have mattered to her for some reason, but also mm. that she hid it. It's not like she had it on display. She I'm expected wondering... somebody to come looking. Sorry, go ahead. I'm mm. wondering if there are worshippers of Lys who all have this statuette. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if for whatever reason they're in hiding and don't want people to know. Maybe. Possibly. But, um, looks like we have a certain wine garden to go to. Ooh. Wine well, do we want to do that, or do we want to talk to her former companions first? Well, um, you said, Arv, that the wine garden is in the canals is that exceptionally near that is pretty near yes if you uh let me just pull up the map yeah um the do dreams wine garden is here and you folks mm. are here okay all oh, right sorry sorry you're fo you're here one one chamber down so wine gardens are here right well, if we wished to go talk to our companions, that would mean trekking across the entire city again. So, I, I vote that while we're over here, we go to the gardens first. But I'm in agreement. Agreed. That is well, I'm in agreement, but it wouldn't really matter because I would have been outvoted. <laughs> still feel like there's some must be something else here there's no not only are there no clues of what happened to her but no clues of obviously who else may have tampered with this place given the door can i do like like one more sweep of the walls just running my hand al along the walls oh you can start yeah of course um are you have we looked at the ceiling either i don't think we looked at the ceiling either yeah, it's just a high ceiling um, that comes to a point. This is the fourth floor of the of this structure. Um, but you can certainly look up if you want. There's not even any rafters, really. It just comes up to a point at the top. And then there's that precariously placed platform with the bed on it about halfway up. Um, so it's a fairly high ceiling. Your, um, your drone, can it uh, do a sweep of the place and see if there's anything that we can't see? And Jaraxxus says, I do not have a drone, at least not yet. But you mean Titus? Yeah, somebody has a drone. Uh, that's a judgment call, actually, Greg. Because your drone oh, has specific uses, you mean, up to this point? Well, so the way that the, the, the book describes the rig is that it's a series of, like, drones that can do various things that are related to you know, the skill set that I choose, which right. is essentially, it, you know, as a medic. Right. So those don't necessarily have what I would call observational skills unless that it's just directly about diagnosis of some kind. That's exactly right. Yeah, they don't have any kind of like extra, and it wouldn't be adding anything to your perception to do it. You could send them up there and it'd be like, okay, they fly around, but you could mm -hmm. see as much from where you are. They don't, they don't, you know, feed in anything to you. Unless and I then attach the, my recording unit to your uh, drone. You know. Although their their recording unit's probably heavier than the drones meant to carry, right? Probably. Unless I created an assault drone. <laughs> oh, that's true. Ah. Yeah, yeah. That's just the whole thing. Why was there a hole blown out of the ceiling? Well, it was a <laughs> <laughs> It was taking a shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Out of the room. 
I mean, that might risk Jaraxxus losing the camera. No, oh, let's not do that then. Please, uh, <laughs> there's safer ways to, to survey this place. We can reach most anywhere in this room anyway. We, what do we need a drone for? Let's uh, take a look at the walls again, because I agree with you. It feels like we're missing something. Uh, if that was Naya's statuette of Lys, she hid it. And uh, if somebody's been here besides her and things have been afoul, they certainly didn't find it. Right. That's a good idea. Oh, yes. So Naya expected someone to come. And then based on the fact that the locks have changed, that person did come and they did not find the statuette. Unless the statuette is a, is been planted for us to. That seems complicated. No. But it's interesting. So why, why, why would she? I'm sure it has more value than just being mithril. But I don't know. Anyway, we, yeah, we check the walls in the whole room one more time, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah, you, you are able to go over basically, I think, some of the same ground. Um, I would say Draxus, I already gave this. I can, I can have, I can have, I guess, Nalls and Fob and Titus, if you're doing this, make um, investigation checks for me. Uh, Jaraxxus, you've already kind of done this, so um, I don't think there's anything to find with another loop. Bob rolled a I'm not finding anything. <laughs> What'd you roll, Bob? I'm sorry. 17. 17, okay. Yeah, Nalls, definitely a wall. You've seen walls before. This thing is absolutely wall-related. Um, Titus with the 18. Okay, so... Um, yeah, as you're, as you're looking around, even the shelves themselves are just sort of built into the wall and held with like very simple wooden brackets underneath. And they don't, they clearly are not, again, they're all sort of rough. They're not particularly even. I mean, they're certainly even enough to hold curios, but these clearly also were sort of DIY kind of, you know, made by whoever was living here, presumably. And you don't find anything underneath any of the shelves either. So, um, it, it feels like there's not a lot of other places that could hide stuff here. Um, you know, maybe if you were able to, I don't know, get up on the roof and look, but it seems, it seems a little silly. Like there's no, there's obviously no way to get up to that roof. There's, you couldn't jump to it from the bed or anything like that. Um, and so um, they're on the walls themselves, just more of these sort of knickknacks, uh, curios and so on. The big notable thing about them is the fact that they have these paints which correspond, roughly speaking, to the paints that you see on the desk one way or the other. That they have been painted. Well, have we seen everything we can see? I think so. And, uh, Jaraxxus, you've, uh, captured those images? I believe so. And, uh, Fob, you've got the statuette of Lys? Yes. Fob has it tucked safely away. Then shall we be off? I and perhaps so. uh, we should uh, lock that lock behind us. Right. Okay. Um, okay. If you go to do that... Um, then uh, you're able to lock it uh, with some ease behind you as you come back out onto the staircase that uh, spirals back down. Uh, as you're heading over to, oh, and actually, where you were headed to, where was the next place you were headed? I was about to do a little the wine, bit of, uh, the Dewberry uh, Wine Dew Gardens. Got it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Wine Gardens, before we do that, it's a good time to welcome everyone in. Um, you are watching uh, Day 24 of Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks, Shadows and Twilight. We are sponsored by Alligator Alley Entertainment. Uh, I am joined by the awesome and amazing cast of Johnny Pittman and Toya Kristen Finley and Kat Rambo and Zach Clay. And if you like what you see here, please uh, follow the channel, but also please do cheer in Twitch because any of the cheer, any of the bits that we get from cheers will go directly to these players um, combined with everything. Hi, Triffid. Um, so please do uh, do that if you are interested and like what you have seen here. We're going to be here this week and next week with the same crew a week from now on Saturday as, uh, as the plot thickens. So uh, thank you for joining us with this. 
Um, okay, so uh, as you make your way up and around through here, um, probably the fastest way to go, and I'll sort of freehand this quickly, is to go from here up through here like this, if you were going to go directly there. Um, because, you know, you cut across the market, like it's it's five minute walk, maybe, maybe 10 minutes at most um, to get there. You could take a more circuitous route that would also involve um, going on uh, a boat. So you could go here and then like that. You could go that way too. But again, that means that you're going to need to find a boat and then go on the canal and then go up and around and all that kind of thing. So um, it's up to you, but that would be the slower way and an alternate way to do it. Those are really the only two ways to get to this place from this side of the city. Um, if we go back through the market, we can let um, Nima know Nimea. that we... Nimia, we Nimia, can let yep. Nimia know that we have left the apartment <laughs> and now we're going to the wine garden, so we still need a heads up if somebody starts, somebody follows us to the wine gardens. Yeah. I say, I, th I say we do that. And then we probably, I imagine, just take the faster walking path. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the... Yeah. Okay. If you're going to take a boat, might as well go on the actual, like, canal canal. Okay. Um, okay, uh, so um, as you are uh, sort of passing uh, through this area, um, and after you have explained, uh, after you've explained this thing to Nimi, as we just discussed, um, and you pass into uh, the area, the spot, the sort of passageways as you're going there get uh, narrower and narrower as you're heading up towards uh, this place. Um, but it is well known, um, this, this wine garden, and when you mention to, for example, Nimia that you're going to be going there, she nods and seems to know exactly where this place is and has heard of it before. So, um, and it, it seems uh, to be a fairly popular place to visit under certain circumstances. Um, but as you are uh, on your way um, up there, um, you see uh, probably around here-ish, I would say right here, just before you enter the area that would lead to what is supposed to be the wine garden, you see a, a cloaked and hooded figure approaching you. Um, the cloaked figure is dressed in a, uh, what looks like kind of a, um, sort of shimmering in the twilight, um, white cloak with green trim. And the hood, which is covering their face, um, is made of a fully green with gold, uh, with sort of gold lace around the outside, covering them over. But you cannot see their face as they approach you. And they're not hiding. They're just walking towards you directly. Fob blends with the crowd. Okay. No crowd here, Fob. By this point, you've reached. There's no one behind you. So um, you're kind Bob, of on your own in this place. Fob hides behind someone else. <laughs> okay. Blends with the other people. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Is, is the cloak of a similar kind as the cloaked figures that have attacked us? No. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Okay. Then we probably just wait until we face them directly. Okay. We What's keep the approaching till the we... person in the Sorry, second. Disposition of the person approaching. Is it are they determined? Is it casual? Um, is there an air of caution? I would, I would say I would say slow and steady. They are clearly making for you. But as far as the demeanor beyond that, because you can't see their face, they're not like, you know, they're not booking it, but they're clearly headed. They're, they're clearly intending to intercept you. Um, so, yeah, does, and I will I'll continue, Titus, but I didn't want to interrupt you if that was the, like that's that's what you see from them. That's it. That's it. OK, so the um, cloaked figure uh, comes up and stops um, in front of you and uh, her the, the face of this person. Oh, actually, conveniently. Can I do this? Hold on a second. 
Never it's mind. on her face. Glasses aren't supposed to fall off. Also, <laughs> uh, no glasses on this person, just to be clear. Mm. All right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Love the cosplay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I'm I'm doing mm -hmm. what I can. Um, <laughs> and so they come up and um, and say to you, um, Ah, I had heard rumors of a strange group of visitors asking about the missing Silesians. I am curious why you have made your way to a wine garden. There is no party here. Why are you investigating this disappearance? Voices, um, almost ageless, uh, smooth, um, and, uh, steady. Um, hard to tell if old or young. Um, and again, face is concealed and almost sort of, you know, lowered to the ground, like looking down. Is there, before one of us answers, uh, the voice, does it have a accent and or timbre that we could either say like, oh, this voice texture sounds elven and or this accent sounds like it's a moon shadow elf or whatever. Like, is there anything to indicate specially what this person would be or what culturally that they would be? I don't know if there's a vocal difference between humans and elves or if that's something you, you could recognize. But Right. Um, I'll tell you what. Now, for you, it's not nature. Um, for you, it would it's be... It's lore or xenobiology. Excuse me. Xenobiology. There you go. Xenobiology, but you're doing this at disadvantage, Jaraxxus. Okay. Unless, of course, someone in chat wishes to inspire you and thus cancel that out. Yeah. Can I... And that right. that sounds like testing the biological, like, this is an elf voice sort of thing? Uh, yeah. Of, what about of that group. What about accent? Uh, similar. I, I think it would be about... Okay. You know, xenobiology would also be about being able to determine certain cultural traits um, right. about something. So I would say the same. Here we go. Natural Wow. Term. Um, it is exceedingly well and carefully, I don't want to use the term disguised because I don't want to send you down the wrong, the wrong kind of like rabbit hole. Um, it's exceedingly well shrouded. Yeah. Or, or, or modulated even, mm -hmm. but it does sound elven. Yes. Okay. Oh wait, did you, I said disadvantage, right? Oh, you did. You did. Damn it. I should have said that before you said that. 13. Uh, yeah, it's, it's third. I should have done the, the one there. Thirteen. Um, okay, I forgot to. That's okay. That's my fault too. I also forgot. I'm not sure that you would have picked up that it was Elvin with that, okay. um, but you would have figured out for sure that it was. Yeah. So. Some and something's being hidden. Yeah. True, Triffid. True. Um. Duraxis gives all of you a look where, in some situations, he has been the sort of boisterous uh face of the party but um in others he kind of looks at nalik and nalik for everything that that Jaraxxus lacks nalik excels in and so he just sort of gives a look deferring to how we want to address this person hello good stranger well met you mentioned uh not party and also you mentioned people who had disappeared how did you know that those are things that are concerns to us i have heard rumors about the city you are clearly not from Celis, and thus i had information of your arrival you have not been entirely discreet in your investigations. There's a bit of a, like a halting affect um, to this person's voice. Yeah, discreet, no, but I suppose the disappearances haven't been all that discreet either. 
That is so. Also, what is so is thanking JLC for the resub. Good to see you, JLC. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. I hope you were doing well. Thank you so much for the tier one resub. Um, uh, and the, the mysterious figure says, that is so. They have been stretched out, staggered, so suspicion has not grown all at once, but slow and over time. But then I wonder if those discreet, not discreet disappearances are related to not discreet investigations. Well, uh, you called them the Salasians. That one's new to us. Who are they? The people of this city, this realm. You have met many of them in your travels. Are you working for one of them? Jaraxxus butts in and says, Excuse us if we find it hard to be friendly with someone who hides so much about their intentions and who they are. I am sorry for this secrecy. But I have been pursued myself, and thus am wary of strangers. What is it that you wish to accomplish regarding these investigations? Uh, I could wager that you either wish to stop us from this trail or help us, and which is it? That would depend on who you are working with or for. That would determine my answer as to whether I would wish to hinder or help. Uh, Nali kind of nudges Jaraxxus because Jaraxxus has evidence of a particular family. I mean, I am wearing a tabard of... <laughs> House wh whisper wind, <laughs> but I just I sort of cross my arms. <laughs> to to what to conceal it? To to co to cover it, but it's art like it's already kind of plain. So he then just like then widens his stance and shows it. Are you working with the whisper winds then? Maybe. <laughs> How else do you think we got here? Many paths lead to the Twilight Realm. Do I take it then you are working with the Matriarch, the Mother Whisper Wind? We investigate with her blessings. And uh, make an insight check for me, please, Nels. Can I do one as well? Yes. Anyone can if they want. Definitely hooded, Nulls. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so was Jaraxxus. Who was the 12? That was me. That was you? Okay. Uh, Titus, you doing one as well or no? Yeah, give me one second. Okay. Because <laughs> um, I'll wait to see who gets the highest. Yes, it is the barbecue hoodie. 14. Um, so, Jaraxxus, when you mentioned, uh, or actually, I'm sorry, it was Nalls. Um, Nalls, when you uh, mentioned, the th when Nalls mentioned the thing about with her blessing, um, Jaraxxus, you think you see the cloaked figure relax a little bit. At least they seem to, like, the tension in their arms drop slightly. You sort of raise their head slowly a little bit. Hmm. Can yes. it be true oh. you work with her? Yes, as it's as Nalik said, we work with her blessing. All the whisper winds or just her? 
is uh, out of game is if there's no sense if the voice is masculine or feminine at all. Hard to tell. Mm. Jaraxxus kind of gives a knowing look at the rest of all of you. I don't know if there's, there's probably no way. Yeah, I just give a knowing look like, hmm, now I'm asking about multiple Whisperwinds and what have we heard about other Whisperwinds? Well, one of her children has disappeared herself, so we could not be working with her. Also, Jaraxxus, don't you have telepathic abilities? <gasps> I do. <laughs> Thanks. I I can also <laughs> detect thoughts, but I... I um... I don't know if I want to poke around uh, yeah. such a powerful figure here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Jaraxxus will... You see his, his beard tentacles, because that's how it works, uh, <laughs> twitch a little bit, and he communicates to the other party members that he suspects maybe this is that lost or estranged uh, sister, or knows about her. But we'll see what they say. Well, so wait a minute. Let, let me refresh my memory a little bit here then there's there's the elder whisperwind the mother yep there's not a father figure of any kind right as far as we know he's or, uh, as far as we know he's died no that's the brother who died but well we yes the brother Son. died but but um didn't we also ask um i'm i'm for forgetting the pixie's name at the moment rel about the fa rel about the father as well uh, i don't remember that but that might be uh, but we yeah, know so that the, other... the sister also disappeared, but mm -hmm. the sense that we got, she is not um, wrapped up in what Naya and Rolas are involved in. Like, it seems to be separate, but also she seems to be a bit of a black sheep of the family as well. Yeah, trying to find and, her. And um, Rel was the one who said, hey, could you please find her? As if it's like the rest of the family isn't as concerned about what's happened to her. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yes, found her name. Mavra is the estranged sister who may have also gone missing. So, we'll see. Can we make an insights check specifically or an investigation check or something, xenobiology, however you want to think about this? If there's any similarity between the speech pattern and the, the tone, timbre, whatever, about this particular character and the other two whisper ones that we are we are familiar with, Yes, let's say uh, I'll say xenobiology for that. I'm also doing this at di <clears throat> excuse me disadvantage just because I see what you're getting at. But yeah, I wasn't gonna get it anyways. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell. This is obviously like this is being well disguised if it is being disguised. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, Draxus will say. We are, um, yes, we're working with all of the whisper winds that are around and that are alive. And uh, if you know of our investigations and you know that we are concerned for what's happening to the Twilight Elves here, is there something we should know about the whisper winds? Not all are friendly to the whisper winds would you oppose the whisper winds enemies if you found them uh, speaking for myself it depends on what the enemies are doing sometimes the enemy of your enemy is your friend and it depends on what the Whisper Winds are doing. Mm -hmm. Do you believe the Whisper Winds tell the truth? About what? Or just in general? Just a nod at the, maybe to the in general, but no response mm. otherwise. I mean, we know that there's some friction between that family and the other Twilight Elves here, but we don't know why. And if you learned the reason, would you take sides? 
or endeavor to find the truth? Well, baby, I've always been about the truth, but the truth must come from a trustworthy source. Persuasion, Nalls. Do it at plus three. <gasps> Dang. Wow. That looks like a crit hit. Is that plus four? So we're talking natural oh. 20? Yes. She, she, the person pauses and then says, voice completely changed. Then it is enough. On screen, you will see what happens when she pulls back her oh. hood. Oh. You see what is clearly um, a twilight elf with white hair, but you also see, and in fact, you see it so strongly that you almost have to do a double take, a striking resemblance to Elu. It's not Elu Whisperwind, but it sure looks like her. Um, and she has this almost sort of sad look a little bit on her face or a sad expression and she says I am sorry to have had to deceive you in this way but I have been pursued by sleeper agents for some time now and I must be careful to whom I reveal myself I am Mavro Whisperwind I have been seeking out what has happened to the people of Celis, and I have done so disconnected from my family I do not want them hurt. I heard, though, that Elu had returned, and that she had brought some with her. Since that time, I have been tracing your steps. We thank you for being so honest and trusting of us, Mavra. I can tell you that you are deeply in Rel's thoughts. Rel. I am sorry, I could not explain to her what had happened. If I were to tell her, Rel is not always the most secretive. She looks a little uncomfortable, uh, Mara <laughs> does at this. She does like to talk. That is true, and the trees have ears, as you might have noticed. Um, I want to note, by the way, how startling the change in her voice is. There is a slight hesitation occasionally once in a while that seems like just part of her usual speech pattern, but it's as if you took what you were just listening, what you, what you have now, and turned it to 11 and, like, dropped the pitch two spots. Like, it, it almost seems, like, magically configured in some way. Um, I was about to say auto-tuned, but no. Um, but it almost seems like it's magically configured in some way. Her voice seems totally different except for that. Um, <laughs> Proxima, your search for barbecue discounts is over. I have, nice. I'd like, Proxima's been on a roll the entire night. Very <laughs> nice, Proxima. Very nice. Very nice. Um, but uh, she, and she says, um, yes, I wish I could have said more to Rel. But I know that you, like me, have been investigating these disappearances. I think this is a bigger deal than the Primarch wishes to suggest. And I am limited in what I can do, because, obviously, I am evidently a Whisperwind. And what's more, I have connections on a religious plane as well. I am a shaman, one of the spirit callers, and some of my investigation has led me through there and to here, where you have ended up also. And where exactly have you been hiding yourself in another plane? Because the trees certainly haven't been able to locate you. Or the trees have not decided to tell you. And she gives a slight smile, and she says, they are my friends, and they have been now for many decades. It is not that they have lied to you, it's that they have spoken a deflected truth let us well i shall say that the trees have been very helpful so if that's because of you then we thank you and she kind of bows slightly and she says i am honored if you have helped save my sister and i understand you were part of what made it possible for her to come here then you are worth all praise elu is very special and i wish that my mother would understand that more. She loves Elu dearly, do not misunderstand. But my mother is deeply and always concerned of the business of Celis. Meanwhile, Elu has been concerned with the world above. 
I am afraid that Twilight Elves sometimes are too self-absorbed, too connected to our world here, to realize that they up there will not stay there. Eventually, the entire planet is connected one way or the other. But my mother does not necessarily see it that way. Mm. Mm. We may have a bit of uh, news for you about your family, but I gather it may warrant a longer conversation and by all of our beliefs, including your sister, it has little to do with what's happening down here. So... And she kind of like, you mean concerning my family here? Mm. Concerning your family, yes. But, like I said, if, if... we are about to go to this garden and do some mission, then perhaps we should do that. Or if we wish to... Well, I, I don't know. Now that you've revealed yourself to us, what, what are you, what brought you to the garden? How did you... Yes, you, you did suggest that uh, Naya did not disappear because of the party. So you knew about the invite. Yes. I have found some information about it, and I imagine since you're here, you may also have heard of it. You have been to Naya's home, I assume. That's where we were just before we got here. Naya is my best friend. Was, and then she sort of pauses, and is, and then there's almost a bit of a steely tone when she says, and is, like, my best friend. And I have been searching for her whereabouts for some days now. Eventually, my investigation led me here. This, and she points over her, uh, jerks a thumb over her shoulder. This wine garden here caters to only a select few in the city, and they hold private gatherings for individuals and organizations on high, including nobles and primarchs and, and she sort of looks at all of you seriously, spirit callers. Perhaps, if you wouldn't mind telling me what it is that you've learned, I can share what I know as well. Well, we can fill her in on, on Rolus. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the everything that we learned from the Karyo troop, okay. and uh, and maybe we show her the the uh, what's it the symbol of the goddess we just found. That's up to Fob. The the yeah. list statuette. Mm-hmm. So Fob's going to show that? Yeah. So when she sees it, she kind of like, you can see she almost like a hand kind of almost reflexively goes up to near her collar and she says, Liz. Oh no, then. Oh, Naya. And she seems like pretty, like, like kind of a little bit taken aback. And she says, where did you find this? Hidden. Hidden in a room. What, what room? A, a room. Can we show the pictures? Of yeah. Them? I mean, do you just oh, want to sure. tell her that it's Naya's room? Is my question yeah, basically. And but... she says, "Naya's room. This was in Naya's room." Yes. Then it must. It, it must be. Then it must be. The, every district where disappearances have happened. The spirit callers have held private gatherings to select training candidates to take their initiation trials. I myself went through one, but a long time before this. The most recent of these gatherings was here, at Do Dreams. Every time there's one of them, someone disappears, and Lys is associated with the spirit callers. She looks like... Now, Mavra seems very, like, kind of steady, but she looks sort of like... She almost looks like she's tearing up slightly, like, mm. at the this revelation. What is the significance of the statue, then? Naya had said that she was thinking of making a new path for herself, that she loved art, but she did not love the sense of emptiness she had in the same room that was broken and falling apart. She was too proud to ask for help. I would have gone and 
asked mother or anyone to help her, but she refused. And she said it wasn't just the money, it was the purpose, the calling. She had to do something different. And she told me that she had been thinking about joining the spirit callers as I was. I told her I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. She, of course, is thoughtful and connected with the world, but her art is beautiful, and, and that too is a connection to the goddess and, and the gods around us. But she said she needed something more than that, that she wanted my comfort, my sense of calm. And she said that perhaps she could get that with the spirit callers. Then she didn't talk to me about it anymore. But this tells me that she was planning to do this, perhaps that she was intending to do it, to try to join them. You said that uh, there are initiation trials, and if there are initiation trials, then there are someone or someones leading those trials. Do you know who's in authority of the spirit callers? That is a somewhat complex question. There is someone there uh, whose name is Shayanan. He is one of the, a peer of mine, but he's been at it longer than I have. Um, he, on one level, would be considered the one that would manage some of these trials, but he is not the true power. The mentor among us is a woman named Ostrika. She is wisest of all of us, and has some people say direct connection with the spirits beyond but I have not seen anything to indicate concerns from her but she is the head of our order and just in case anyone's curious the first one that she mentioned that was S-H-A-E-N-A-N Shannon um, and the person that she mentioned that's the head of the order is Ustrika so that's O-U-S-T R-I-C-A uh, Draxus says we spoke to the constable. He directed us to one Shannon as well. It uh, is possible same... that he would know something at least about spirit callers, but as well, the initiation right here, and she kind of looks back over her shoulder again, that was what in the end seemed to me the most important thing, even though it's been some time nine or ten days now, I think, since the trial took place. Uh, do you think something has corrupted the spirit caller leadership, or do you think something or someone is using them? Corruption? I, I cannot imagine. I, o Ostrika is, has, a, has an understanding of the deep things of the world, the... the connections beyond corruption, but I... And she kind of, like, falls silent. Three days ago, I would have said that you were mad to even suggest it. Now, I... I no longer know precisely who or what is responsible for anything. It is quite possible now that anything could happen, corruption or otherwise. We have uh, encountered some deep things of this world, and they have certainly wanted us dead. And she, um, she sort of nods. She says, well, the realm of Celis can be unfriendly to strangers, but you must understand that from the point of view of my people and the people below, we were betrayed at least as many of the Twilight Elves see it, by the world above. Thus, anything up there is dangerous, and our world picks up upon it. Hmm. Well, I suppose shall we head to this garden and get some wine? Seems good. I would ask if you would have me that we join forces. I must at least partly conceal myself, but there may be times when my presence would be helpful, especially if you find or see Shannon or especially Ostrika. I am known to them. 
I have concealed my identity so I may make my investigations to this point, but obviously now, perhaps revealing myself in this guise would be better. And uh, where might we find you if we need to chit-chat? And she smiles, if you'll have me, right next to you. This was the next place I was intending to go. If you are going to do dreams, then I would be honored to accompany you. And it would be a pleasure to have you. And she nods um, and she says, oh, go ahead, Draxus. Draxus removes his tabard and folds it and puts it away and says, maybe, maybe now we don't need, you know, I, I was wearing this to see, you know, to let people know, you know, we're friendly. We have an invitation to the city. Look, here's an emblem of someone who lives here. But um, I like the, the quiet approach now, maybe. Um, and um, she she nods she says very well um before we go to that place though i would ask and i'm sorry to pry you mentioned having news of my family i things with my family have been difficult of late and if there's something wrong i, I would wish to know it's i it always bothered elu that we had become, not me and her, but myself and my mother, estranged. And Drax sighs and, uh... And is there any... Uh, I don't know, but Drax has already gotten a vibe from Maver that she knows what she's doing and, you know, has... I mean, she was disguising herself. She can disguise her voice she's had this discretion so she seems like you know he's trying to measure whether or not uh, his inclination would be to lie to her so that she, she's not now compromised right. heading into this in, into this area For or sure. if this news wouldn't do that to her yeah um, i mean uh it, I, I would say I would. I was gonna say you could even do an insight check, but I'm not sure that mm -hmm. that would apply here. I don't know that you can know that ahead of time, Draxus. It's right. you definitely know from her demeanor. You're right. I mean, her concealment was quite good, um, and uh, you know it was only thanks to some pretty incredible, per, you know, perception and a hell of a persuasion check that you were able to kind of convince <laughs> her to drop the disguise in the end. Um, so. And she certainly, she's a little older than Elu, um, you know, you would guess, although it's hard to tell with, with elves, but um, but she's a little older than Elu. Um, but as to whether, you know, how this would affect her, I don't know that you can know that ahead of time. Mm. Unless you just, I guess you could figure out a way to ask directly, like, hypothetically, let's say that one of your family members <laughs> got hurt. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to, how you would do that. Jer ways. Yeah, Jirax is, um, and he also submits the idea that the three other members of the party know this information as well and could choose to say it, but he says to her, given what it is uh, and what we have before us, I see no difference between you knowing it now and knowing it after. And perhaps it is a thing that you would wish to be with your family to process. And she kind of, you, you see her expression. Um, thank you very much, Polar. It's good to see you. 43 months of support. Hi, Polar. It's good to see you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome, Polar. Um, <clears throat> so she, so you kind of see her, like her eyes kind of narrow a bit when you say that, when she say the thing about processing. And she says, meaning what exactly? I will not say. And she kind of like raises her eye and she says, very well, then we shall wait. The immediate concern, of course, is trying to find Naya, but well, I will ask you later. I'm hoping you will be clear then. We have had enough disappearances as of late. Jaraxxus nods and then kind of looks at the other party members like, eh, but... Uh, then looks back to the garden. All right. Assuming the party is good, moving on to the garden. I should say, by the way, that um, my area here is under a gale warning um, because, you know, I live near the ocean. 
So while you were saying that, there's been all of this like ominous like wind <laughs> gusts and everything, mm -hmm. like all this stuff. Well, Convergence let me think about gothic that. soundscape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. People named Gale pounding on your door. <laughs> hello, <laughs> hello. I am the one you seek. <laughs> Whisper wind, this. Anyway, um, so there's a Gale, a Gale warning. Yeah, a Gale. There, it was pretty cool, like <laughs> that. It just sort of all worked out um, mm -hmm. at the same time. I, there's a reason I call this Wind Coast Studios. Yes. Uh, anyway, so, um, okay, so assuming then you follow, uh, or I shouldn't say follow, but go along with her, um, mm -hmm. and you head up to the, uh, what is the Dew Dreams Wine Garden. Now, let me reduce this a little bit. All right, we'll move her over there. Uh, right. Um, so, uh, right here is where you are going to end up, and let me... Can I move the map up even further? Uh, it's pretty good, I think. Let me see if I can get up a little bit further. Yeah, all right. I think chat can see that. Um, so, oop, hold on a second. Quick, somebody read lips. <laughs> there are there's a bunch of women named Gail pounding on our door outside. <laughs> <laughs> Asking to come in. <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. Sorry about that. We are uh they are searching for the orange cat who must have some medication, so they wanted to know if I had seen uh. said orange cat. Uh, Sherbert is one of the most the friendliest cat of all time, and is also not a fan of, of getting medication. Uh, the other yep. cat's much easier with that, but Sherbert's just like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to uh, depart <laughs> the area now. Um, anyway, so. Okay. Uh, so, um, all right. So we're headed up here, blah, 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 blah. Um, right. Do dreams. So. Dew Dreams is uh, built around this lush garden courtyard, and it's decorated with these many small tables and gathering nooks. Uh, flower beds and sort of iridescent foliage line the walls and these decorative metal overhangs. And there are wine rooms on the second floor overlooking the garden below from these elegant private balconies. The whole thing feels very frou-frou, very like, you know, like... Um, Highfalutin, like it's it's uh, very impressive and clearly wealthy looking stuff. Um, and as uh, you are walking into uh, that area, you see uh, someone coming forward. Um, and uh, this is a person who first looks a little strange to you. And then as you look a little bit closer, you can see why. Because although it is a, a humanoid figure, you can see what look like little bits of almost leaves and bark on the fingers. Um, and as you kind of look a little bit closer, like sort of shake your head, Nalls and Fob, I think you would be able to know that this almost certainly looks like a dryad. I don't know that Titus or Draxus would know what this is, but sort of a tree-like creature that often tends to uh, the forests and the woods and things like that. Haven't seen a dryad down here to this point, but that's clearly what this is. Um, and as you're sort of standing there, she kind of looks up and sees you and says, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I, I wish I could help you, but um, unfortunately, uh, we are preparing for an upcoming event. The area is reserved for tonight and tomorrow, but the wine rooms are available for rent by the hour any other day. If you'd like to come back, uh, you may be able to. And then Mavra says, Glimmerleaf, it's, it's Mavra. And Glimmerleaf, so named, uh, when Mavra steps forward, oh, oh, I, I, uh, oh, uh, it's, uh, oh, Mistress Whisperwind, I'm I'm sorry, I I, I didn't see you. I um I saw these uh well um uh sorry I um you well I wasn't familiar. So what why what can I do for you? Like is clearly thrown off by Mavra's appearance, um and Mavra says uh well we were just here to ask a few questions. I have come with some friends, uh Glimmerleaf and. I wondered if you wouldn't mind taking a, just a minute to answer these questions. 
oh, um, yes, well, and she looks over her shoulder, and you can see that there are a bunch of people, like, rushing about and, like, setting tables and, like, uh, you know, marking things. Some of them are, like, tapping little stone crystals on the tables that glow as they tap them. Like, they tap them a few times, it glows brighter and brighter. And then they're sort of, like, it's very clearly preparing for something. And, uh, and uh, Glimmerleaf sort of turns back. Well, you, well... If, of course, for a whisperwind, anything I'd be sort of most pleased. Uh, uh, yes, uh, your your friends. I'm I'm sorry for the original uh, um, the the original introduction. Uh, I I am Glimmerleaf, the uh, proprietor here of Dew Dreams. Um, um, and and you are. And she kind of looks at the four of you. Well, really. I'm Nalls Darkly. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Jaraxxus. Yes, yeah, sure. her eyes kind of linger on you, Jaraxxus, since you're clearly not, uh, you know, elf, human, or anything else that she's familiar with. This is, oh, yeah, oh yes, about oh, right, Jaraxxus, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Fob. Fob, yes, yes. And, and, and then so and finally. And Sorry. Add Tight, tight. And she looks down at you, and <laughs> as she looks down at you again, she sort of has the same, yes. Now, she clearly has the reaction of someone who's used to not making comments or reacting, but clearly is sort of like, yes, right, well, I don't know who the hell you are, but, um, and she says, yes, well, um, uh, certainly, what, um, what, what, uh, what, what, what can I help you with? Uh, anything I, anything I can provide? What, what questions do you have for me? Does Mavra seem like she's going to let us ask first? Yes, Mavra seems to be sort of watching to see and kind of judging the whole encounter, presumably. Was there a, a party here 10 days ago? Well, yes, of course. Uh, we often have um, ones 10 days ago. Uh, that would have been, let's see, um, 10 days. Whoa, yes, that would have been the, the Spirit Caller gathering. Yes, yes, I remembered very well. I was honored to host the Spirit Callers. Uh, it's actually the second time um, that they've asked me to do that. Um, the entire establishment was actually rented out um, by the Spirit Callers, in fact. And uh, we don't mean to pry, but what did they talk about? Oh, well, I certainly wouldn't know about that. Um, it's not my business to uh, n either pry into or, frankly, even hear of those. Um, and, um, frankly, we made sure to stay out of the way and simply attend to them if needed, if there was an additional wine or anything like that. Although the spirit callers had their own wine, so we didn't need to provide it this time. Oh, it made it easier. Their own wine? Yes. Uh, do they have a specific way of making it or how is oh, it different from what you offer i certainly don't know our, our wine of course is made in particular ways um grown through a combination of factors fermented through the use of some of the uh mushrooms and fungi that you can see under under the ground here perhaps in some of the caves you might have noticed it but that's of course the our vintage theirs was they said something special for um i suppose just uh the rituals for these potential hopefuls for the trials I, I wasn't familiar with it they brought a case of their own special vintage we we did have some wine for guests that wish to go outside the immediate area we always make sure to have that but um, no for the most part they simply had their own wine there is there any left no they took it away with them when they were done with it um, we of course have our own wine but not the wine that was used by them hmm and they're um, always good customers. You never have any problems with them? Oh, certainly not. They, um, well, to be clear, they make fiduciary remuneration arrangements very quickly. Um, we never have difficulty receiving money from them. And um, beyond that, well, they, um, well, how to put this? They uh, don't let themselves go. Uh, there's never any problems with someone who has perhaps grown too fond of the wine asking to swim down the canals the wrong way you understand what i mean uh and that never, happen. never happens right uh no certainly. not with other customers well i mean certainly what happens at do dreams stays at do this. dreams that's generally our approach and uh do you usually see the, the same spirit callers 
Well, um, usually, I mean, the ones who are the hopefuls are different, of course, but, um, well, it's usually the, well, the, the mentor of the one is responsible for them. Um, also, usually there are people who raid from BP Gaming RPG, uh, as it's just happened now. Thank you to, uh, BP Gaming for the raid. Thank you, everybody. Five raiders joint. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Hawk 99 Thank you, BP Gaming RPG. Good to see you. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome to Expedition to the Mysterious Peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm assuming you played some awesome TTRPG as well, what did you play? Thank you for joining us, and uh, yeah, welcome to the campaign. Um, gaming is going well, BP. Thank you so much for joining us. How did your session go tonight? Um, so she says, um, yes, so I'm sorry. Could you, could you, what was the last question you just asked me? I got, I got distracted. Um, uh, uh, if, if there was anybody new to the... Thanks, Drew. To the group. Also, hi, Drew. Um, well, no, it's usually castles and crusades. Oh, nice. And it went great. That's awesome. Um, I have heard, uh, well, usually it's it's always the same one. Um, in fact, it was um, Astrika um, who usually does it. And she was the one who did this as well. She actually uh, paid up front um, the whole thing, which made it much easier for us. Hmm. With uh, Mavra's blessing, it would we be able to go to the room where it happens? Oh, but uh, she said, um, she said, it's always about the room where it happens, the room where it happens. Mm -hmm. um, she gestures to the whole thing behind her and she says, but it was here. In fact, in these very gardens, there was no private place. Well, there were some, I suppose, but they were all part of this mix. They, there were mm -hmm. a number of them and they were to be had in all of these tables and so on. And in fact, um, it's one of the things that we're preparing for now um, because you see, Ostrika herself has asked for another private gathering to be held tomorrow night. Um, so Certainly with someone that esteemed, I wanted to make sure that we made a good impression. Well, certainly, Mistress Whisperwind, you would understand that. And Mavra kind of nods slowly, and you can see that her eyes are like... You can see the gears turning in Mavra's head very clearly as she's been listening to all this. Um, and uh, and so, yes. Um, and she she sort of nods and she says, well, yes, and, and that's... That's that's well. I'm I'm. We're most happy to be able to cater to someone like that. Hmm. I see. Would we be able to attend the event tomorrow? Oh well, I. Uh, well, I mean, I'm 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 not sure. I I, I don't know whether and Mavra says that's up to. Yeah, Ostrika. and it's, it's, it's Ostrika is the one who makes the arrangements, and Mavra says, "Well, what if I were to suggest, Glimmerleaf, that um, we wanted to be involved? Um, I, I am, as you know, a spirit caller, a shaman myself, and um, I perhaps would like to, um, I'd like to observe for myself uh, how this particular procedure is happening at Dew Dreams, and." Glimmerleaf says, well, but you couldn't you ask Ostrika directly? And she says, yes, but I'm trying to gather information about someone. A missing friend, Glimmerleaf. And Glimmerleaf kind of like stiffens a bit and says, well, there's certainly no involvement here with Dew Dreams. My establishment does not cater to nefarious plots. We would not have missing people coming as a result of this. I'm I'm appalled, not at you, but I mean at the fact that someone has gone missing. That That's... Who? And she kind of looks at the four of you. Who, who has gone missing? Uh, surely your establishment has no part in this either, but... Hmm. And, and Draxus looks at, at Mavra and kind of gives a, a look... As if to say, like his eyes flit from Mavra to Glimmerleaf, as if to say, can we really trust this lady who runs this place? I mean, it seems like you have a, a stronger relationship, but Jaraxxus is like biting his tongue. And Use the telepathy. I was about to say, <gasps> telepathize. I Gosh. telepathize. <laughs> yeah, this is not not a power that uh, Kaz ever had. I have this uh, image of Titus behind I going, know. telepathy. Like, he thinks it's <laughs> yeah. um, Okay, yeah, Jaraxxus goes, uh, uh, would telling her about Nihilestri encourage her to help us or just make her more suspicious? Also, hi, this is Draxus. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And did you say, I'm sorry, did you say that to Mavra or to the... To Mavra. Oh, okay. So Mavra kind of like does this for a second and then kind of like looks... So when she looks at you, Jaraxxus, do you do like a, you know, like type of thing? Okay, I do, right. I do. I so do. She, she's sort of like... And this telepathy allows... Can she speak back to you? Um, she telepathy? can. So yep. she says um, to you, I've known Glimmerly for a long time. She's most concerned about the estab her own establishment's reputation, but she is not dishonest. The last thing that she wants is to help someone and in some ways bring down the reputation of her place. So I can't imagine that it would hurt if she even knows the name or maybe the description. All right, so Jaraxxus will uh, say, we have reason to believe and we must trust you with this, that among the people that have disappeared as of late, the um, elves that have gone missing, uh, one of which is Nihilestri, uh, an artist from the Karyo troupe. And she kind and of like, glimmer, go ahead, sorry, sorry. We think that she may have disappeared here as part of the Spirit Caller's trial. In fact, it seems that Every time the spirit callers have a trial, someone goes missing. So, if they've had trials here, it's most likely that several people have disappeared from this establishment. And if this is true, and we can find out what has happened, not only will your business not be complicit in this truth, but also you will be likely lauded for being the one place that has led to finding the truth. And she kind of rubs her chin a bit and she says, I see. Well, I don't know this Naya Lestri by name, but do you know what she looked like? And so, uh, Mavra could tell you, I'm sure. Yeah, and Mavra describes her. Um, and as she goes on, as she describes her, Glimmerleaf sort of nods and says, yes, I do remember her. And I remember her because she was in the group of spirit caller hopefuls but she in particular was being talked to by Ustrika. I remember it distinctly because I came over at one point to refill the wine from their special case and, well, they had been together for some time at that point. And Mavra, so Mavra kind of like, you can see her kind of like set her jaw a bit, like, you know, God damn it, you know, <laughs> like sort of that reaction. Um, and, uh, and and uh, Mavra, you know, sort of sighs and sort of looks at all of you and kind of nods. And um, uh, Glimmerleaf says, um, listen, I, I don't, well, this is all a little embarrassing, but uh, uh, Mistress Whisperwind, uh, if, if I could uh, shed some greater light on this situation, um, is there an opportunity for you to uh, spread the word about my humble establishment, perhaps? And Maverick kind of, like, raises an eyebrow, like, meaning what? Well, uh, I, it would be most helpful to know that a noble of the city is um, has uh, patronized my establishment. Um, uh, perhaps a uh, diplomatic function? And Maverick kind of, like, and sort of looks at the four of you as if to be like, like, what do you think? Like, should I do that? Uh, Dira you see Jaraxxus is like ready to show about. <laughs> <He's, laughs> he, he says, uh, Lifestyles of, of the rich and famous. Having, having uh, worked directly with Miss Levia Whisperwind, the matron of the house, I am positive that if you help us find this truth, get to the bottom of this, that you will become the official wine of House Whisperwind, surely. Well, uh, and she kind of steps in and she drops her voice and she says, y you see, um, I am uh, rather a connoisseur of wine, and so uh, I, I might have kept a bottle of Ustrika's wine. I, I didn't think she would miss it, and uh, I thought that perhaps it would be of use to you perhaps mm -hmm. 
but there is a complication. Um, you see, um, there is uh, the there are racks that hold my private collection, and um, there's been a recent outbreak of fungus, um, sort of a distorted, mutated form of what we use to make our own wine that's growing around the racks. Uh, the fungus is noxious, and my staff won't go near it. So, uh, if you could see your way clear to perhaps removing this infestation, um, I would uh, offer a reward of my rarest vintage as payment, and of course you could have the wine of your streakas, and also you would have my eternal gratitude. And Maver says, and of course you would have a clean wine rack. Yes, that is a positive corollary effect, yes. Mm. In fact, uh, um, no better reason for us to attend the event tomorrow than to be your sanitation team. And she sort of like, well, I maybe. It's sort of like, I never thought At least of me, it sounds, uh, I, I love the idea of being undercover. I've never done this before. It's up to the party. And, uh, Mavra, would you be able to communicate with this fungus and remove it peacefully? Well, fungal communication isn't really in my line, uh, unless there's some spiritual dimension to it. It's possible that it's just a toxic fungal patch, um, but it's probably not that difficult to remove. I, I've certainly seen other examples of it before. And Glimmerleaf, Glimmerleaf nods like, oh, I'm certain it's not difficult. Uh, I ask because of, um, we've encountered some fungus, as I said, that was uh, quite malevolent. Oh, malevolent, Glimmerleaf says. Malevolent fungus, as if you've just said, closing tomorrow, you know, type of thing. Malevolent fungus. Uh, well, uh, and, and she actually says it loud enough that a staff member looks over and she's like, ah, mm, that's, that's dreadful. Look, I... If you can do this, I'll, I'll throw in not just a bottle of vintage, not just your streaker's bottle, but I think I might know a way to get you into the party uh, directly. Uh, not just the, the sanitation worker's idea was, was, I'm sure, a wonderful idea of great merit, she says to you, Draxus. But I, I, I think I have even a better way. Uh, and if, if you'll help, I don't want any malevolent fungus in my, my establishment. Show us the way. And she nods. She looks at all of you. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Um, and uh, so she um, she brings you over to this one area, and then she says, um, um, "Careness." And Careness comes over, um, a uh, looking like a sort of a uh, twilight elf, uh, you would guess. Um, and, uh, she nods and bows slightly, and Glimmerleaf says, uh, Kairness, would you take them, uh, down here, uh, to the, uh, bottom of, uh, in the cellars, um, where my private vintages are kept? And Kairness sort of, like, backs up and she says, and Glimmerleaf says, no, I'm not going to ask you to clean it. We've been through this. They have agreed. And Karen is like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah of, of course, certainly, yes, yes. And seems quite happy. Like, clearly this was a conversation that had been had before. Um, and so she, uh, Glimmerleaf, says, thank you. I, I will be waiting with bated breath. Um, well, just as soon as I finished with these light crystals. And she, like, rushes off to do that. And uh, Mavra sort of, like, smiles slightly and then uh, allows the four of you to follow um, Kervis. Um, down to this uh, door at the bottom of a stairwell, small stairwell. Uh, she unlocks the door um, and then opens it and bows slightly and then disappears up the stairs, leaving the cellar door open. Um, and there is uh, there is some like luminescent light you can see within the room below. Anyone know anything about fungus? Other than... Who, who was it, one of us, that had a fungal trip? Was it me? That was you. It was me. <laughs> I don't really remember. That was in the forest, right? That didn't it was in the forest, and I you heard, uh, I heard had quite voice. a time. Yes. Hmm. 
I wonder if this is the same type of infestation. Maybe I have a, a resistance to it now. Well, uh, let's not get too feisty with this. I'll gladly go first. Okay. And I, I say, pull him down. yeah, I say loud enough that it's sort of just, I don't know, the, you get the sense that I'm saying this just because I'm recording, and you know that I'm recording, I'm like, we never have fear wherever we go. And <laughs> I stride down the stairs and uh, listen at through the door for any sounds. Okay. Uh, well, you're standing in front of the door, so you don't really... It, it, this is at the bottom of the stairwell, so um, the door is already slightly ajar. You could uh, oh. see more of it if you wish. I mean, you could you could listen at the door if you wish. So uh, this is... Uh, um, Glimmerleaf said this is noxious. Can we smell anything as we're approaching? Let me have you make a perception check for me, No, That's a good question. Wow, your <laughs> Nalls has not is decided not to play on perception today. Yeah. Um, for those listening Gosh. at home, that's a twenty-five. Um, there is, uh, yes, a faint kind of um, odor, sort of an earthy um, odor, might be the way to describe it. Um, uh, sort of like, um, kind of like, uh, sort of a cross between. Um, compost you know like rotting leaves and things like that um a very earthy uh pungent smell um as you sort of are getting just to the edge of the room Nels. um mavra can you smell that and mavra sniffs and says yes it smells like some kind of well mold or mushroom but i don't know anything specific that smells like that mold you say which would indicate some type of decaying i would assume yes um at least from my experience uh Jiraxa says cover your faces and slowly pushes open the door inside the door uh, as the door opens inside the room you can see that this private cellar um, that you've been led to is about a 40 foot square room and there are these wooden wine racks lining each wall but along the far wall and there is luminescent light within here you can see there are rows of purple and black capped mushrooms sprouting from this broad patch of dark mold that seems to be spreading along the floor and over the racks from what you can tell mm. And you can Are definitely there... smell, like, uh, the, you could definitely smell it even more strongly here, this, this scent. And we see, like, spores in the air? You do not see spores in the air, but you definitely smell a pretty strong, pungent smell here. Hmm. Does this oh. fungus look like any of the other fungi that we've encountered? Right. It does not, all, well... I mean, you've encountered some things that sort of have the shape of some of the mushrooms, not this combination of colors, though, and, and okay. not sort of growing in this way. Mm. They don't, for example, look like the ones along the shores of the lake, exactly. Okay. All right, well, how do we wish to approach this? How does one remove fungus? You sort of scrape it? I would say uh, just burn it. Well, we'd have it. to kill it at the root, wouldn't we? Uh, yeah, the the patch is right there. Oh, sorry, it was like a, a delay. I I'm I I missed like half of what you said for some reason. Oh, half of what who said? Half of what Zach said. Yeah. I I didn't say much. Just that how how should we get rid of it? Uh, should we scrape it? Should we burn it? But maybe not because we're in a wine cellar. Well, uh, shouldn't we get to the root? Okay. And Jaraxxus, uh, sighs and moves forward directly towards 
the mushroom patch. Constitution saving throw, Jaraxxus, please. Gladly. Me and my mighty plus one with an 18. Okay, so the smell is definitely foul, like a little bit, but you're like, you kind of, I don't know, I assume you with your tentacles you cover your mouth or something. You cover like <laughs> using it. Um, so one way or the other. Um, but it definitely is, there's something, you know, strong there. So you move towards the back wall, is what I understood, um, mm -hmm. as you move in there. Mm -hmm. When you get within about 10 feet of that wall, the patch of black and purple suddenly shifts away from the wall and you see it like and begin to grow up from the floor until you are facing something that looks like that on stream. Ooh, it looks boy. at you and stares directly at you and then goes <laughs> And that's where we're going to bring our session to a close for the evening. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Luckily, I speak mushroom. He just said, hey, how's it going? I will fully give credit, by the way, to this, that this is actually um, uh, concept art from Magic the Gathering, which I thought Zach might appreciate, um, of this oh. fungal creature. But literally Great. what you are facing is what is described as a fungal horror. And I don't think if you look it up, you're going to find it, because I think it's unique to Expedition. Um, mm. But... Great. Uh, since we had about five minutes to go, I didn't want to start a fight right now, but I figured it would be a good place to start next week when you're yeah. going to have to deal with a fungal horror. Uh, and I mm -hmm. should mention also that behind it were two other smaller, bright violet things looking similar to it also growing up behind it. So you're dealing with three creatures that look kind of like that. Great. Delightful. Delightful. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um... This uh, this was a ton of fun, and I'm actually super excited now. A lot of stuff got done also. You had the exploration of Naya's house. You ran into Mavra, which was obviously very important. I really, really loved that. Um, I was thinking, you know, Gandalf in uh, in Two Towers, uh, you know, it's Saruman, it's Gandalf. You know, like being super mysterious until revealing himself. I think you all handled that very well. And now you've got the situation with Dew Dreams, and you're starting to figure out a bit about what's going on here. There's the whole thing now with the Spirit Callers and Ustrika and all that stuff. So you're all kind of narrowing it down. And, of course, uh, the thing that uh, Draxus was being very careful to avoid talking about, which is the Whisper Wind that you happen to know about that maybe has had some problems up top, by which we mean not with us presently. Um, so there's a lot of stuff there. So I am super excited to see how all that is going to end up uh, down the line. I will start with uh, Zach. Um, great stuff um, from Jaraxxus. Again, I love the idea. I'm so glad that we had someone that's just like, I will confidently march towards the thing. I'm just like, all right, let's 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 roll. Um, so I love that idea. Um, and uh, there was also, of course, on multiple occasions, the fact <laughs> I was almost going to say I was like, you know, well, it feels like table talk metagaming. Then I was like, nah, not really. I can imagine each one of them being like, don't you are to love the like um, multiple times. And that was very funny um, in both cases. Very like, oh yeah, let me let me talk to each other with telepathy. Yeah. Um. So, uh, and finally, of course, uh, setting up for this combat. Uh, didn't have combat today, but we'll obviously be starting with the combat next week. So, how did you feel about today's session, Zach? Where will the lovely folks, besides next week, find you next? Yeah, I'm literally writing a note on my character sheet right now in all caps. You have telepathy! <laughs> Don't forget Keep telepathy. Forgetting. Yes, uh, that was great. This is great. I love the development of the story. Meeting and, and getting uh, Maver with us is cool. Got the, you know, speaking of Final Fantasy, got the classic, you know, little text that pops up that says, Mavra has joined your party. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, always cool to have a, an NPC helping us. Um, yeah. And exciting to have combat. Uh, well, maybe maybe not combat. We'll see. I have a I have a feeling that Nalik is gonna go the persuasive route, or at least try. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, the plot thickens. Uh, the spirit callers' involvement and these disappearances and our our party dynamic too is is slowly solidifying. I think. Um, so. Agree. Yeah. Very very cool. Uh, find people will find me, of course, here next week for our uh, next session. Uh, you'll also find me on what has officially started as of last Tuesday, 
uh, the return and the final season of the Alien campaign on the Unmade Gaming channel. So for years now, for maybe I think three or four years, uh, I've been on the cast for the an Alien show that has been GM'd by one little red dot. Awesome. And uh, that's in the official Alien RPG for the Alien Cinematic Universe. Uh, and I play a character who started at 11 years old, uh, a kid named Vince. And that's literally his his vocation is kid. There's actually a kid class in the Alien RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, and this then is how now, you know it hasn't been the final season yet because he's still right. alive, this kid. Yes, <laughs> so. yeah. And now we've time skipped enough. This is our fourth season, I believe, and final, that uh, Vince is now older than I am. Uh, we've we've time skipped forward and he's wow. in his uh, late 20s, which tells you I'm, I'm still young-ish, guys. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's been that just started last week. You honestly, didn't miss, miss too much if you wanted to watch this Tuesday night um, as we start to figure out how to. I, I guess the last thing I'll say is our our uh, crew there has got, reached a point where we have found a fungus uh, that is derivative of the cordyceps fungus that's uh, seen in like Last of Us and so on that can be used to control or or alt creatures and the goal of one of our players or player characters is to use a type of cordyceps fungus on the xenomorphs <laughs> as a method of wow what is least... with all the fungus all of a sudden like the yeah fungus. yeah i was about as to a, say <laughs> yeah as a method of not controlling it but at least like wiping them out wow. in, in some way cool um and so we're what where we're at right now is finding an alien to capture infect with it and put back and the idea of doing that is terrifying um what could go a wrong? lot of a lot of resources yeah what yeah. could go wrong so yeah that's all you'll find for me uh every thursday too except for this coming thursday unfortunately i'm playing uh divinity original sin with my friend maddie that's been great and our vocalist on this channel as well although you might you may not see me in april because i have the alien show going on on tuesdays um but yeah that's that's all for me at the moment Good stuff. Always a pleasure. And don't forget, chat, because I don't think we've mentioned it on Expedition, that uh, Gen yes, GMs, uh, our Generation mm -hmm. GMs show uh, that Zach and I do about GMing um, with different generations of GMing um, mm -hmm. is uh, up and, and available right now. We've got uh, a few long episodes up there already. We do. We've got more sh long episodes coming and also short episodes are going to be, not short, but shorts from the episodes are yeah. going to be coming up as well. So that's en route um and you will hear more of us from there so definitely check out thank you trivet that uh, link and please sub to us over there if you want to hear more about gming from the two of us um so thank you zach good stuff tonight uh cat uh as always um was a fan of fobs i love the image of fob walking up and like ch checking out the bed and being like let me look underneath it and then be like I don't know about this bed because it's clearly not super stable and all that. Um, and I, I do want to emphasize, too, that um, this probably was clear, but just in case it wasn't, that it was not easy to find the thing that you found. And the reason you're able to find it is both because you went up the ladder and back down the ladder and also because you are Fob, who was a rogue used to looking like for stuff <laughs> like this. So, like, yeah. when you said the thing about, like, I'd like, you know, Fob's retirement plan is collect a lot of fascinating doodads, you've kind of been that. This isn't your first rodeo, I guess, is my point. And so uh, that's one of the reasons you were able to do a check um, that was a little bit more effective than might awesome. otherwise be the case. So um, Fob's unique abilities here were a part of that. We did not get to see the knives and the bite today, but that, I think, is coming. Although I don't know if you're going to want to bite a fungi. We're going to see if you want to bite mushrooms. I'm not sure about that. I, I don't know about <laughs> biting them. No. Well, no, I, I thought this was a lot of fun. It's fun to uh, have kind of this series of clues and starting to fit pieces together or perhaps just jamming pieces together willy-nilly when <laughs> making them fit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, tons of fun and looking forward to we're actually going to play again next week, yes. which is exciting. One week. Amazing. So, chat, we'll be back in a week. Um, where will people find me before then? Uh, you know, on the Twitters, that sort of thing. That's about it. 
on the Twitter. It's always a pleasure. And of course, you should be buying uh, Kat's amazing books as well um, and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, thank you, Kat. Amazing work as always tonight. Uh, also amazing work from Toy Kristen Finley. Uh, Nalls, as usual, uh, bringing uh, the awesome concepts and ideas there um, and thinking about some of the other characters bringing in the merchants and making sure that you know those are all sort of tied in that's a big part of this as well i was also uh enjoying um seeing Knolls kind of i had two thoughts about this one is that Knolls was big on the mushrooms up top you know in the top world and thinking about like are the fungi involved in something and i had this image of like foreshadowing with mushroom foreshadowing so to speak um mm -hmm. that we had there but then also having to figure out things regarding this sort of mysterious figure um and whether uh this was someone that people could trust or not trust and you know clearly all of you were having to navigate that you you got ambushed by creatures like Last session, Nalls and Fob were both being, well, Nalls was being followed by and Fob was following these other mysterious cloaked figures. So you had reason to mistrust and create suspicion um, for you. And yet you were able to kind of work beyond that to get a sense of who this person, who obviously is presumably an ally of some kind, could actually be. So um, so some good stuff from Nalls. And now we're going to get a chance to see... Um, all of the all of the Nulls uh, combat action stuff that we'll be looking forward to next week. How did you feel about today's session? Where will the folks find you next, Toy? So I'm shocked because I thought we were going to have to find Mavra ourselves, and Mavra came right to us. Well, so you you were the you doing parallel investigations. Surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a really pleasant surprise um, and a nice reveal as to why she was missing. It wasn't anything nefarious. She was just investigating investigating the nefarious so that was really cool um i really enjoyed all of the investigations again I've, I've said this before you know not everybody thinks of looking at or trying to do the same sorts of things so it's really cool when other people come up with ideas that i'm not thinking about um so that was a lot of fun in both um investigating Naya's apartment and also uh, talking to Mavra and, and gaining her trust. Um, so I am also just around the twitter.coms. Um, I also have books on uh, game writing and narrative design, if those things are uh, inter of interest to you. And yes, as Emily says, I am also editing the 2024 Gen Con anthology. Yay, so just announced. That Very... will be a new volume yep. coming uh, towards you soon. Very able, uh, very able editor of that. I am going to be uh, secretly and silently because these are all blind submissions. So we're going to be uh, submitting this stuff. So I am going to see if I can uh, get a story through the uh, the difficult obstacle course that is the uh, Toya's amazing editorial work. But no, it could not be uh, in better hands. So very excited about that. Um, and yeah, it's going to be awesome. So I am uh, very excited to see that. But yes, great work today, Toya. And you should absolutely, I've said this before, Toya is the first way I got to know Toya was actually at Gen Con doing panels where I was like, this person that's on panels is always incredibly smart, thoughtful, and is like, has great things to say every single time. So that has always been the case um, with Toya. So you should absolutely um, check things out. And now Toya will not be able to make as much fun of me because I actually have functional quarterbacks on my on my pro team. So that's that's you know that, well, they, they, they I, be great. They're I've just functional. Never made fun of you. have Showed me a cartoon no. that made fun of Kenny Pickett and his small hands. Okay, and yeah, they, that was not me making fun of Kenny <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pickett and his small hands. That was Gridiron Heights making fun of Kenny Pickett and his small hands. Which you did find but he's and the, show but me. for some reason the Eagles took him on so whatever yep. but yes you have two functional quarterbacks congratulations you also have a functional offensive coordinator yes those are all true things um and combined with a good rest of the team anyway um but always a pleasure to have toya with us thanks toya um and last but certainly not least uh the amazing and awesome johnny Pittman with titus um obviously a more laid-back session here for titus um because of what happened in the last session so totally understandable as to why um but titus did have you know we we have sort of the preservation of those flecks of whatever they are, the colors um, that was asked by Knowles. Um, but Titus was also sort of generally kind of getting a getting an environment, sort of getting a sense of the environment around them. And not only, of course, will uh, Titus have some stuff to say during this combat, but I imagine we'll have stuff to say based upon what, you know, comes up in terms of if you get through this 
fungal horror thing. Um, what happens next in terms of how you're all going to be placed in terms of dealing with Eustrika and the party and all that kind of stuff. Titus, I expect to be heard from on multiple occasions with that too. Um, so, Johnny, how did you feel about today's session and where will the folks find you next? Besides here, where will they find you next otherwise? Uh, love today's session. Uh, the heavy lifting done by Toya and Zach uh, in respect to the, the conversations with Mavra was, was excellent. I do have to say that Titus almost spoke up when uh Jaraxxus was talking about not or acknowledging not actually telling uh her about her sibling's death and that's going to be an interesting conversation when it comes up because Titus's unique experience about losing family and grief and how that works so I'm definitely looking forward to that particular plot point when it arrives um otherwise uh it was a Awesome time. Uh, the fine folks will find me here next week. Uh, originally, I took a couple weeks ago, I had announced that I was going to be doing uh, starting up my channel again tomorrow. But given the trip to New York and a couple other things, it's going to be a couple more weeks out. But there will be an announcement officially next week for April seventh. I think it is. Okay. I think that's I think that's the date that I'm go I'm going with now. Uh, but it'll be fun and interesting and something a little bit different that I don't think anybody's ex actually expecting from, from Tabletop. So we'll see what happens with that. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Awesome stuff. Um, and great work as always from this crew. I really am happy to have them uh, have them back together because they play off each other so well. And yeah, now the mystery is gradually becoming resolved as long as they can take down some uh, angry mushrooms. But we'll talk about that uh, next week. Chat, can we get some love for the amazing and awesome Johnny Pittman, Toy, Kristen Finley, Cat Rambo, and Zach Clay. Thank you, players. And I will see you one week from today. Bye for Good now. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, night, everybody. All right, uh, and that is going to do it for us for uh, this evening. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for being here because that was a lot of fun. I really am excited um, for next week and for just the you know getting back into this. And as I say, we have other stuff coming up, uh, including uh, swag from this campaign and other things that you'll be able to check out. So it's going to be good times. Um, we are going to do a raid today, but before I talk about that, I'll just quickly mention uh, that I will be back on uh, Tuesday. I will be playing uh, at around noon Eastern. I will be playing the Patreon Field Chat Chosen Game of the Month, uh, which is going to be Californium. It's based on the work of Philip K. or inspired by the work of Philip K. Dick, so it should be an interesting experience. Uh, that's going to be at uh, noon Eastern. And then I will be over on uh, GOG Com's Twitch channel with Pen and Pixels uh, and doing some D&D &D with GOG Ghosts of Saltmarsh. That's coming up. Uh, then we'll be off Wednesday and Thursday. I will be back with more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Such a good game. Uh, and then on Saturday, of uh, one week from today, right back here with more Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks, which will be the final uh, session for us for uh, the month of March, moving us into the month of April as we move on. I can't believe that we're almost we're almost into April already of 2024. It's amazing. And by the way, April only a month away at that point. Chat from ArvCon. So uh, coming up, coming up sooner than you think. Uh, these things are going to be happening. If you like what you saw and heard today, I hope you will follow the channel. I hope you'll check out the YouTube with exclamation point ArvTube. And if you were over on my YouTube channel today. Um, I just noticed, I may have missed this before, but yeah, I think I did. I'm sorry, Brass Monkey. I had a lot of windows up at once, but Brass Monkey was saying you guys are playing D&D 5th Edition. Not exactly. We're playing uh, something called Expedition from the Mysterious Peaks. Um, this is probably for the benefit of, uh, it's not going to be the benefit of Brass Monkey because I think they must have asked me that probably a half hour ago and I didn't notice it. Um, but this is, of course, Expedition for the Mysterious Peaks is 5e compatible, um, but it is uh, allows you to use either Dungeons and Dragons or Esper Genesis rules. Esper Genesis itself, 5e compatible. Um, but those are the basic kind of uh, principles of it. And uh, so, yeah. So um, I, uh, yeah, but in any case, um, thank you for having stopped by and I hope you uh, enjoyed what you saw and heard. And again, you can find uh, more of that over on my Twitch channel, but please do consider subscribing 
subscribing to me on YouTube as well because you get those uh, when you get over there you can get uh, notifications whenever I post new content and there are literally thousands of hours of content over there now uh, both video game and tabletop game related so you should definitely join me over there discord is exclamation point arv cord you can hang out with the arvanauts in between streams twitter is exclamation point arv tweets website arvanelleron.com uh, and uh, blue sky is exclamation point arv sky financially uh, exclamation point arv shop that's that merchandise area as I said more stuff coming soon patreon is exclamation point arv Treon. that is that right over there that really does uh, make a big difference to the channel because of it allows me to uh, commission videos and overlays and things like that so please do consider supporting us with that you can get cool stuff for yourself and cool stuff for the channel um, and that would be very much appreciated if you could support us over there um, we also have of course subbing to the channel as several of you were kind enough to do today that allows you to get those custom sub badges and emotes to use here there and everywhere across Twitch and also inspirations to help our players at various times as well um, on the uh, publishing front uh, exclamation point Icarus is my graphic novel from the amazing Athos Arts exclamation point library that's my tales and tomes from the Forbidden Library my 5e adventure and source book from Alligator Alley Entertainment which is now almost out of print um, which is good news the edition is almost sold out we've almost uh, run through it completely which I'm very glad to hear um, so uh, the company and I have been talking a little bit about next steps I can't talk about anything specifically yet but it's obviously good news so please get your uh, orders in now if you want a copy of the physical stuff because they are going quickly um, and uh, that Alligator Alley is also involved with Grey Shade exclamation point Grey Shade that is the link that will get you over to my Grey Assassin trilogy first two books Grey Shade and Renegade are already out from the amazing Athos Arts both edited by the amazing Emily Bell um, and uh, that's exclamation point those first two books in the Grey Assassin trilogy also the audiobook of Grey Shade done by our very own Trent Sparks uh, that is also from Athos Arts and that is available at link too you can also pre-order the tabletop role-playing game of Grey Shade which is coming at the end of the year that is going to be coming to you from Brandon O'Brien the awesome game designer poet author role player game master extraordinaire and also from Alligator Alley Entertainment uh, previously mentioned who sponsors this campaign so you can get both of those uh, you can uh, pre-order that and you can also pre-order the final book in the Grey Assassin trilogy edited again by the amazing Emily Bell and written by yours truly uh, that is going to be coming out the summer of this year on schedule so the last book of the Grey Assassin trilogy Heretic coming out this summer uh, again if you liked what you saw and heard would love to hear from all of you about that if that actually happens um, and last but certainly not least exclamation point BLM Black Lives Matter important to affirm and assert the significance and importance of black lives exclamation point help now the World Health Organization page on suicide prevention important to reach out to others when you need help and reach out to others when they need help as well and exclamation point Ukraine U-K-R-A-I-N-E to help the people of Ukraine as they fight back against an illegal and illegitimate war with bravery and courage and send the message that we will do so for others in this situation in the future we are going to do a raid today because it's not super late and we had a decent turnout tonight the Arvanauts have landed followed by twitch raid lowercase twitch uppercase r lowercase aid also this one sub raid uh arvany hype the Arvanauts have landed arvany roar arvany witch arvany smog arvany love arvany blown all the arvanies uh when you are brought over auto magically uh to the place that we're going to be raiding in just a moment um speaking of raids uh thank you so much um to uh the person who raided me earlier on which was where were we um, I saw this previously. Yes, BP Gaming. That's what I thought. Thank you to the raid from uh, BP Gaming RPG. And thank you to everyone who made this an awesome stream today. Thank you to Drew, to Emily, to Hillness, to Prince Justin, to Trippity Mats, the best mods in the business. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much as well to my wonderful Patreon supporters and subscribers. Drew, Emily, Hillness, Prince Justin, Trippity Mats, Cat Rambo, and JLC. And thank you so much to my wonderful viewers. Thank you to Determinologies. Thank you to Happy Bones. What's up, Determinologies? Thank you to Happy Bones, to Jagtris, to Live Suing. What's up, Live Suing? Thank you to Very Funny Dragon. Thank you to Nonstop. Thank you to Regress. Thank you to Retro Spy Gadget. That's an awesome name. And thank you to Video Store Cowboy. And special thanks today to Alligator Alley Entertainment, our sponsor for this campaign, and especially my players. Thank you again to uh, thank you to Johnny Pittman. Thank you to Toya Kristen Finley. Thank you to Cat Rambo. And thank you to Zach Clay for being awesome. And more from those folks coming very soon.
because I put that thing right where I want it to go. Great. As it's coming very soon. That's it for me. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I will see you folks on Tuesday for the Patreon Field Chat Chosen Game of the Month. But in the meantime, please stick around for the raid, which will start as soon as our video is over. And uh, I'll see you back for more Expedition for the Mysterious Peak soon. Until I talk to you next time, everyone, please be good to each other. And have a good night. Thank you.